Como? Starting. The festival. <laughs> La festival. Stay on target. Stay on target. And we are <laughs> live. There. All right. There. We have a rowdy panel today, guys. How you doing? Welcome to Caliber Corner episode number 55. And uh, Sand Hills is working on his Spanish this morning, which is a good thing. Uh, man, we've already got a lot of people hanging out. Let's go ahead and do the, let's go ahead and take attendance here this morning. Uh, e Rock is with us on the YouTube side. Patriot in the Dark's with us. Uh, Andrew Peterman, yo. Vanessa Kitty, hello. Uh, tacos and French fries, always putting that in my mind. Uh, Patriot in the Dark, Patriot in the Dark, I'm loving your videos, man. Keep it up. You're making some sweet content. Ozzy Osbourne. How you doing, buddy? Uh, the the Luft Wolf, the Luft Wolf is with us. Uh, Jim's out there, and Jim is here. D set D temp sixty two. Uh, let's see, coming to us from the wonderful state, the free state of Kansas. We got Fit and Fire with us. Uh, Cadillac Jack Odie Vandalistic of Logs. Yo, what's up, buddy? From the land down under. Um, Adrian So twelve. Good morning, David G. Welcome, welcome. And over on the uh, Gun Channel side, we got a we got a crew over there right now too, hanging out. Tony's there. Tony's here. We got uh, Patrick over there with us. We got Paper Plane Crash, and Jim is there, and Jim is here. So anyway, guys, real quick, I just want to apologize for not being on last weekend. Uh, there's a tradition of a, a colleague in mind, myself, a buddy, coworker of mine. We go to a small town about 20 miles away that has a huge car show. We put our cars in it. It's just a it's just a tradition. So it's something I got, I got to do. So that's where I was at. But I was missing doing Caliber Corner. I'll tell you that I would have rather been there than sitting out baking in the sun. So uh, Free beer. what's that? Who what? Free beer. Uh, free, no, I wish. OK, so he says, say, Adrian. And then say Zo 12, Adrian Zo 12. All right. Well, we'll get that one figured out. Let's go and let the panel introduce themselves, guys. I'm going to start on my left because we've got a first time panelist on the show, somebody who is making some cool content on his channel, somebody who watches a lot of your chats and shows and videos. David Bowling, how are you doing today, man? What's going on? I'm doing good, Travis. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. So what, what can we expect when we go check out your YouTube channel or go follow you over on Gun Channels? What's going on? I just got signed up on Gun Channels, and uh, so I'll be putting some content over there. And on my YouTube side, it's pretty rudimentary right now, shooting with my cell phone camera, just going through some of my equipment and uh, explaining my my version of uh, my stuff, you know, just my experience. No, that's cool, man. That's cool. And that, that Ruger Security 9, if you guys are interested in that, check out David's videos. He can, you know, talk about the experience of owning one and shooting one and just the overall fit and feel and finish. If you've been, ever been curious about that, it's one of the better deals in a, uh, just what, a medium-sized handgun, I guess you could say. It's almost a Glock 19 size. Um, has it been reliable for you so far? Have you had any problems with it? Yeah, I've never had a problem with it. My boss was shooting it, and he's more of a rifle guy. He actually doesn't have much experience with a handgun. Mm -hmm. And every time he'd fire it, he'd rock the slide and it would cause it to jam. And I, would, I told him it was a semi-automatic, so I had to kind of show him how to use it. Mm -hmm. And he, he's quite quite a bit bigger than I am, so he had like an odd grip on it. And he did get a uh, slid bit, you know, oh, he's the slide. way riding way up on it. And he was probably at his thumb maybe resting on the slide too when he pulled the trigger. Yeah, but when I took it to the range, I had it was myself and four other people shot it, and everybody said it was really smooth, uh, yeah. not a whole lot of snap to it, easy to stay on target. Nobody else got caught with the slide. Nobody had any other issues. I thought it was kind of funny because I watched him. Every time he'd fire it, he'd rock the slide, and it would double, you know, because there was already one in the chamber, so he'd pop oh. another one in. <laughs> and I let him do it a few times just because it was funny to me. <laughs> And then I finally showed him how to use it, and it was pretty good. So far, so good. Awesome, awesome, good stuff, man. Yeah, that's that's good to hear that it's been a reliable gun because I think for a lot of people, it's it's a good option. And and where you live in Maryland, it's it's a, a new option for you that that you didn't necessarily have before. So that's a good thing. Yeah, uh, it was only came available in June or July of 2018 here in Maryland, okay. and uh, I paid after taxes. Plus, you'll see in the video we have to have a bore lock or a chamber lock when we buy a handgun. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, after all that, it was in a 3% discount because I paid cash. I ended up paying, I think it was three fifty five. Oh, dude, and that's not, can, that's not bad at all. And you can find it a lot cheaper other places. Uh, I don't really shop on the internet. I like to go into the stores and actually sure. touch the stuff. Uh, but yeah, you can yeah. find it. You can find it even here in Maryland cheaper. Yeah, that's that. That's not a bad. I think I've seen it between three hundred and three thirty, depending on where I'm at and who's got it on sale. So that's that's not a bad deal. 
Yeah, I, I would cool. recommend it so far. Cool, cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us this morning, man. I do appreciate it. Uh, Jim, Jim's joining us. Jim, what's going on, buddy? How you doing, man? You staying busy? Too busy? Uh, to always. No, I'm, yeah. I'm busy. I'm busy on the side subscribing to a couple of new channels here. Mm. Who so, are you checking out? Who are you checking out? Are you checking uh, out David's channel? David's channel, Patriot in the Dark. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was late to that part, Andy. I should have subscribed mm -hmm. to him a while ago. Patriot's disassembly videos are freaking awesome, man. I mean, he's got, I mean, and, and great, you know, great. I mean, the, just the camera work is awesome. I, I learn a lot from watching them, and um, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. You know, a lot of, a lot of disassembly videos are up on YouTube, but have been up for quite a while, and he's got some of the better video quality that I've seen in the, in the disassembly videos out there. I think he just posted another one recently, maybe last night or, or a couple days ago. So I'm trying to keep up with, with me being at, at work all day and then I come home and I'm trying to catch up on the subscriptions. But uh, so what's what's new in your world, Ben? You got anything new coming to the YouTube channel this spring or this summer? Are you going to get I out sure, and, and do some shooting? I, I sure hope so. <laughs> OK, well, we got to check in with you. Is the floor done? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, yeah, it's been done for weeks now. Don't you follow it? I haven't seen any posts on Instagram, so that's why I didn't know what the progress was. So Jim yep. is busy retiling the entire house right you're getting everything redone in tile and doing doors and all that fun stuff and knocking out walls and stuff oh yeah lots yeah, of remodeling house. can't you just contact those people down in texas the magnolia people and have them just come in and do everything for like six figures and just be done with it oh yeah that, easy that's pocket change <laughs> <laughs> that's right man but anyway then, thanks I'll for out, man. Buy, then i'll go out and buy 20 new guns and oh, nice yeah. and safe and you know Heck yeah Exactly, exactly. Awesome, man. Well, I'm glad you're with us, so thanks for joining us. Uh, hey, joining us from the great state. Five guns in bulk. What, yeah, there you can get a discount. Just get yourself a crate of Mosins, and you'll save lots of money. So, well, not anymore, but yeah. Oh, man. So, Sand Hills is joining us from the beautiful state of Nebraska. Sand Hills, what is new in your world, and what can we see on your channel if we go there? Oh, man. I don't think there's a whole lot new right now. Um, I'm at work, so I'll hang with everybody as long as I can again today. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, cool, cool. A few new videos from the road trip last weekend, so go check those out. A couple of them are very horrible feed. A um, couple of them aren't too bad. So uh, the the last one I put up uh, about the uh, the kids and the gun safety, mm -hmm. and I uh, just turned the camera on and, and faced it forward and, and was showing off some of the beautiful sand hills too uh, as we're rolling through central Nebraska around uh, Sergeant, oh, yeah. Taylor. Sergeant Taylor Burwell is, is where we were, so um, right in the middle of the state there. But uh, go check that one out. You can see some real pretty country. And uh, I'm kind of curious to see what everybody has to say about um, that topic that I was talking about there at the beginning of that, too. So, Yeah, what to, what to do, how to, how to safely secure the firearms, what can you do or should you do when it comes to having yeah, children in the and, home, you know? About, about the situation that happened over in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Do you want to let people know what happened real quick in case they missed it? Well, sure. Um, it, was, uh, it was reported on... Monday. I don't know for sure when this happened, if it was Monday or, or Sunday, but there was a, a Council Bluffs family um, was uh, over in Des Moines, Iowa, staying in a hotel. And a two-year-old ended up uh, accidentally shooting himself because he found dad's loaded 45 caliber pistol in the luggage. And that's all the news report I've ever found. I, I haven't actually seen any details. We don't know you know, what kind of handgun it was. We don't know um, what the deal was. If, if dad said, Hey, get in my suitcase and find something. And he found something else instead, or if he was just poking around where he shouldn't have been, we don't know where mom and dad were at the time, if they were in the room or not, you know, if he was unsupervised, but you know, the whole thing could have been avoided. Um, ultimately, in my opinion, if only there just wasn't a loaded gun unsecured, within easy reach of a two-year-old. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to go off on the guy because everybody makes mistakes and he's going to live with the fact that, you know, his kid shot himself. Um, he didn't die. And last I knew he wasn't in critical condition. I mean, he's going to be okay, but still, you know, every time that, that uh, he gets that kid dressed, he's going to see that scar and remember that, you know, he's responsible for that. So yeah. I don't think we need to be too hard on him. He's going to be hard enough on himself, I'm sure. Um, and he's, you know, that's, I think that's punishment enough uh, in a lot of cases. But just in general, you know, the, the video was just kind of inviting discussion about, um, you know, who is at fault? And then should it be something that's criminal or not? Should it be punishable by law? Yeah. 
it's a bad situation and then you know stuff like that happens and then you got your aunties that jump on it and the next thing you know they want more regulation and then because of an accident that happens but again it could be prevented but at the same time you know it what do you do you know it's just it's a bad situation all the way around so all right well hey man thanks for the content you keep putting out i love watching the uh the videos, they, they're kind of relaxing. I'm sitting there cooking dinner and you're sitting there just going through the prairie and I'm thinking, <laughs> I, mean, I could do it. I could go five minutes and do the same thing, but I'm going to let you do it instead. So, uh, but no, it is beautiful out there. This is awesome country. And if you're a good chance to come out here, definitely do. So we talk about it all the time because it's just, if you've never had this kind of wide open space, it's amazing. And just the way the people are and stuff and it's cool. So, and all right, man. Well, bites us in the butt. I'm pretty soon everybody, well, up until it bites us in the butt and pretty soon yeah. everybody's going to come move to Nebraska and then we're going to be overrun with people from East Coast and West Coast, and it's not going to be like it is anymore. So, I know. Wait till they see. Wait till they see how inexpensive our property is. <laughs> our house is. <laughs> oh God! For some people, that's what they pay for property tax on a home, and you can have a full size house. So, uh, no, it's okay anyway, though, because in, in Nebraska, you have to work to earn a living. Mm -hmm. So that's going to rule out a lot of people from the West Coast. This is true. This is true. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, man, thanks for joining us. Good to have you here. Squibby, what's going on, buddy? What's new in your world, man? How you been doing? Oh, other than dealing with some administrative issues this morning, I'm just driving around. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sand Hills, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I need to do some catching up on videos. I've been a little bit behind on, on videos and whatnot. So um, if you – oh, no, wait. I do remember the video. Yeah, because you were in your uh, – you're in your truck driving, so you're talking about the the one you did about a week ago, right? It was, uh, yeah, I went live in the car last uh, Monday. Yeah. So, okay, so you weren't talking about a follow up to that, were you? Not on the one where the kid shot himself. I just made the one. Okay, because that's a discussion that if you if you want to have uh, ever on on air or, or something like that, I I would be. Uh, into having that discussion because I'm a parent and uh, I hear a lot of guys say, Oh no, no, the, an unloaded gun is, is totally useless. Oh no, no, I'm not locking up my guns because what if somebody breaks in my house? I got to be able to get to them. I totally get that. I to it is useless. If you can't access it, it is useless. If it doesn't have what it needs to work. Here's the thing. The person saying that has no children and right. I, I, they don't understand. I have kids, and I taught my kids firearm safety, and I taught them to respect guns, and I taught them uh, that it's something that they can enjoy if they choose, and they choose to uh, in enjoy the uh, the sport of, of target shooting, and and they 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 totally understand that this is something that will change somebody else's life, change your life forever. It's that you've got to treat it with responsibility. And they're capable of it. And lots of kids are capable of it. Even young kids are capable of it. But for somebody who's never had kids and they want to get all bent out of shape over the whole lock it up or unload it, there are ways to have a loaded gun that you can quickly access in one room of a house. And get. I mean, if you live in a neighborhood where you're worried that somebody's going to kick in your door at any moment and shoot the place up and you have kids, you might want to try to move to a safer neighborhood. You're raising kids there for Pete's sakes. But even though we've, we've heard the stories and there are weird things that happen all the time, unexpected things happen all the time, happens all hours of the day and night, happens in all places, happens in wealthy neighborhoods, happens in poor neighborhoods, things like that. In general, you know your surroundings and you know what you're up against. And, I'm, and, and for the people who say, well, I can't afford a safe, I can't afford a lockbox, I can't afford one of those things you keep by the bed that you just touch the keys in the dark and it pops open, I can't. Really? Well, you just bought a new gun. That costs as much as a safe or a lockbox <laughs> or a, point. a vault. So don't buy that next new gun and instead buy some if you have kids. Now, if you don't have kids, hey, whatever. That's fine. If you have kids coming over a lot because, you know, your, your family is, you, your brother, your sister comes over, bring your nieces and nephews and things like that. If they're not supervised and you've got a loaded gun in the closet or underneath the couch or something like that, you need to think about this sort of thing. So I'm, I, I, I understand the people who 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 are they're thinking about the fact that you may need this to defend your life at any given moment that is that is true but it when you have kids you're more likely to have a, a negligent discharge an accidental shooting something like that as opposed to a home defense situation so don't buy that next glock and, and, and get yourself a lockbox hell a simple solution is just carry the damn gun on you right yeah. 
because you're in control of it. That's just as good. Yeah. Yep. And Squib, let me just say too that I I didn't get a chance to be part of the chat on hit or miss Tuesday night at nine o'clock, but um, I did listen to that and I heard what you and Night Strike and Sarge and everybody else had to say uh, about the, you know the similar just the the concept in general on hit or miss and uh, Tuesday nights at nine o'clock and uh, I agree pretty much with what everybody said. So yeah, it's just kind of a you know, an extension of that same conversation. If anybody hasn't caught that when this is over, go go catch that discussion because it was really good too. Well, I think the safety aspect is a good thing to bring up from time to time, just to kind of get it out there to let people know that we're we're not we're not um, ignorant of safety, and there are people out there that yeah, like you said, he made a mistake that that could be the situation, or it could be he's he's a new dad. Who knows? And he's he's never. He's never really had to deal with uh, kids getting into his gun because he's been maybe yeah. single for a long time and he's had a loaded gun all over the place, like a and, lot of single guys do. And that's it's just not, with a, not thinking. Just, with, a two, with a two-year-old, maybe that was an only child so far. You know, and yeah, yeah maybe maybe it hadn't come up before then. So, no, the and I agreed with what you were saying Tuesday night too, was, you know, what's more likely, the fact that somebody might kick down your door or the fact that there's kids in your house that are going to have curious little fingers you know, what, what's the more likelihood of somebody breaking in versus somebody playing with a gun that when they shouldn't and they know better, but they do it anyway. So, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, we've got four safes. I know the combination of all four. I don't have it written down anywhere. I don't have it in a computer file. It's in my head. And all the numbers are inside of one of the safes that I know the combination to. And in the event that I don't know, I had some sort of whatever, uh, all I got to do is, is have a locksmith, uh, pay a locksmith to, to, to crack the, the, uh, the lock on one of them. And uh, I've got access to the others in the event of, I don't know, I just suddenly have Alzheimer's. My wife uh, has, uh, she knows the combination to the one that's in our room that lights up at night that you can pop open. I mean, literally uh, within four seconds, I've got a, a high power pointed at the bad guy. So I, I don't know, I don't understand. You know, some people that say, I've got to have it ready. I've got to have it ready. I mean, like I said, if you don't have any kids in the house, don't have any kids in the house. But if you've got a loaded gun sitting on your nightstand and you're sound asleep, your kid could come walking into your room in the middle of the night. So just think, people. I mean, these are your kids. Yeah. You got the gun to defend them. So, you know, you, you buckle them into that child booster seat. So what's the difference, right? Well, in, 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 it's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. I don't have kids at my house, but occasionally I do have nephews over or other kids over. And anytime there's kids going to be in the house overnight or potentially unsupervised or drunk people. If I've got friends coming over, we're watching football or something like that, people are drinking. The guns are locked up either way. Yeah, and, and that's another another good point. I mean, that we've seen the videos where they've, they've been at a party or something like that and stuff's going on and how this stuff ends up on YouTube, I don't know. But, <laughs> so, you know, somebody gets Cell shot. Phones. Or, Cell phones. Yeah, cell phone. yeah, that's true. But And I'm not trying to be a downer, and and, and I, I weaseled a soapbox there. I didn't mean to take over the <laughs> show, right, but man. I have a tendency to do that. But, I'm just working but, on my I mean, coffee. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I, wanted a, I wanted an opportunity just to follow up on, on that. I think, uh, Sandhills, you... you you, you brought uh, something important to, to light, and, and I just I, I think that it's it just uh, it needed to be addressed. That's all. All right. Well, Squib, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it, man. You know, that's a good discussion to get that out early because I've been asked before, hey, will you do a topic on it? And I didn't want to because there was already a lot of other videos last week, especially that popped up about farm safety with children. And we could make it a topic. I mean, even though I don't have children, I mean, I've got a lot of good ideas about what I would do and what I do do when we have people come over with kids because what you see sitting out is not sitting out when the kids are over. Um, but anyway, no. So Tony, Tony, thanks for joining us this morning. Tony, can you give us an update? What's going on for, uh, for early watch or any shows you're doing any information for us at this time at all, or how's, how's things in your neck of the woods, man? Uh, waiting on Jimmy. Uh, otherwise I'm not doing much. Me and night okay. strike have got together a couple of times and did something in the morning, but that's pretty unstable too, because I'm going to force as much as I can. Oh yeah. Out hunting. You betcha. Heck yeah. Uh, does Jimmy just need a computer or a laptop to do the work on, to do his show on, or what? I think he needs internet. 
Ah, okay. Okay, I got you. He should just do early watch from like McDonald's or something. He just sit there and eat his uh his egg you know, egg sandwich, his bacon, whatever you want to call it. I we can't tried even that I'm a brain weeks. right now. What's that? We tried that a couple of weeks ago and it didn't work. Mm, okay, okay. Gotta find a place that's got quick internet that you can use and all right. Well we'll keep we'll keep an eye out. And again, early watch is it's one of my favorite shows and it's one that, that I grew up watching. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for what you do and thanks for joining us, Tony. What's that? I said, grew up. Kiss my. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. But anyway. All right, guys. So thank you for joining us. We already got a lot of chat going on over on the side. Somebody was asking my opinion or the chat's opinion on, on the YouTube side on SIG ammo, six-hour ammo. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I did buy 357 SIG, SIG brand ammo when I tested one of my Glocks. I uh, purchased it 9 millimeter before. Uh, at Cabela's, where I've picked up some ammo before, um, Prices are very comparable to other brands like PPU and Cellier and Below and heck, even like Remington and Winchester White Box. I've never had a problem with SIG ammo at all. I think they make a they use a high quality brass that's great for you know for reloading. Um, you guys have any experience with SIG ammo at all before we get into our first topic here? I've never heard of it being as cheap as Winchester White Box. <laughs> no, it was. I got uh, the 357 SIG that I bought in the SIG brand was actually cheaper than. God, what was I looking at? Maybe it was the federal or maybe, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad. I mean, like the nine millimeter was, it, maybe it runs like ten ninety nine a box. Federal's eight ninety nine a box. Well, now it's seven ninety nine a box at my Walmart for brass, but um, price-wise, you might pay a couple bucks of a premium, but they do use high quality uh, hollow point bullets. I mean, you're going to be getting a good, a good ammo uh, quite a bit of the time. I, I got no problems with it at all. I think it runs fine. Oh, if it's defense ammo, that's, 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 yeah, all, got, that's all fine and good. If it's, just, just standard ball, ammunition. standard ball ammo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen them be pricey, <clears throat> but yes. 357 sig is just expensive anyway. So yeah, you know, it's not. I want to say honestly, I think I got 50 rounds for 13 or 14 dollars. It wasn't so bad. It wasn't like it was 27 dollars a box or anything like. That. If you look around, like if you go online, uh, I know Cabela's lists like maybe a dozen different uh, types and varieties and brands of 357 sig. They've got some pretty competitive price points, and you go look on any of the other websites, you can find some good prices on it. This is one of my favorite rounds. I mean, I'd, I'd love to have a handgun chambered in that, regardless of the ammo price. But, um, yeah, I've never had any problems with it. So just look around. You might be surprised with what you can get it for. I know sometimes uh, Palmetto State will have it on sale and stuff like that. But, uh, all right, so the first topic that we have, that we have here is uh, pocket pistols. So we've discussed different pistols and guns and different – price points and stuff before but just the uh the topic of the pocket pistol and i'm glad tony we got you here because for, we could definitely use your revolver knowledge here too because i don't have a revolver pocket pistol um there's a lot of things no, you need to either. consider what's that but you got you, you 44 can, magnums they ain't pocket pistols. no i know that but i'm saying you can make some good recommendations and give some advice on good solid brands for for pocket revolvers or you might have more experience than a lot of us uh just revolvers in general you know you're kind of the revolver guy so that's why we default back to you um when it comes to, to the pocket pistol, you know, there's a couple things you need to take into consideration. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you get that Palmetto State ad that pops up in your phone and they're selling that uh, Ruger LCR for $169, you know, like they're doing right now. And, uh, you know, you think, oh, I'm going to go and buy that, but you've never fired it before. Or you've always wanted to say a Smith & Wesson bodyguard or you've wanted a little Jimenez J22. So my first recommendation to you when you're going to be looking for any kind of a pocket pistol, go to the range rent one, test one, borrow one from a buddy if your state allows you to do that. Um, you might be, you might not like shooting it, especially if you don't have a pinky rest. You might find it to be too jumpy or snappy. One thing I've noticed a lot on the, the range test that I've done with these pocket pistols is they've got a very heavy, deliberate self-defense trigger is what they call it. We're talking about something, you know, 10 pounds or more that can affect your accuracy. It might make it, might make you group really poorly unless you practice with it a lot. So get out to the range and test on test one definitely do you guys have you guys ever tested one before you bought one or did you just buy it because it felt good in the hand and then maybe regretted it later on panel what do you guys think about that any any thoughts or feelings on that at all well the only pocket pistol quote unquote that i have is a phoenix yeah 22 uh and i would carry the gun and not feel underarmed i don't you know it works every time i pull the trigger i mm -hmm. it doesn't misfire uh with the three inch barrel, it's not very accurate, so it's up close and personal type mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but that's the only little gun I got. Yeah, yeah. 
I'll, you know, occasionally you guys can laugh if you want, but I got a Jimenez J22 that I keep loaded with CCI mini mags and it'll run a hundred to 125 rounds before the carbon buildup causes it to malfunction. And I've taken it to the range several times. If I just want something quick, going to run down the street or go, go somewhere fast. I'll just throw that in the pocket. It's ready to go. I've got the little sticky holster that goes over it. Um, and, and that's fine. I mean, it were, I mean, Grant, I don't, you know, you say you don't feel underpowered by carrying it. Obviously I would say go with maybe a, a at least a 380 on up if you're going to get yourself a pocket pistol for starters, but even that little gun, I mean, five or six rounds of that would definitely do some bodily harm to somebody coming at me. Um, but I mean, that's just, you know, and so I'm, I'm actually in the market for a pocket pistol myself. I've done a lot of research and I've tested quite a few and I'm not sure which way to go. I'm almost thinking maybe LCP2 right now, but do go to the range and, and, and test one and rent one if you can before you buy it. I know we're not always talking a lot of money with these pocket pistols, but you might not like the way it feels or handles. Now, granted, in a self-defense situation, uh, you might, you're not even going to care about those things. If you have to draw and fire, you're probably not even going to going to use your sights more than just putting a bead on the bad guy and pulling the trigger. So that's something to you know take into consideration, but that would be my first uh, recommendation to you. And the second one is how are you going to carry it, and is there some sort of carry option for you? You might get that weird, say, Diamondback DB380, right? Is there any kind of a holster that's going to fit in? Is there any kind of a trigger guard if you want to pocket carry it? Make sure there's something out there for you so you can comfortably pocket carry. Now, we don't necessarily have to be talking about just, you know, tiny pistols here. I mean, there's any, you can, some people can pocket carry a Glock 26 or they can pocket carry whatever, a Ruger SR9C and not have any issues with it. Uh, you know, kind of depends on the person, your pocket size and so on. So do you guys have any pocket carry pistols at all that you guys have carried or do carry or Squib or Sandhills or David, Jim? Uh, the only I've got one. one but not on purpose uh, okay. I mean I didn't buy it as a pocket carry pistol it just it ha happens to be the smallest handgun I've got and um, I mean I can fit it in my cell phone pouch uh, but I can't hit the broad side of a barn with the thing uh, and it's not the gun because I let somebody shoot it and he got bullseyes with it And but uh, me and small guns just don't mix I mean it, it, it barely fits in my hands It, it it's the recoil's not not comfortable. I mean, it's not as snappy as, as that uh, sky. I've shot the sky before, and that thing hurt my hand. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, you have to yeah. definitely get used. You have to shoot it a lot to get comfortable with it and not feel it the next day when you shoot it. So, yeah. But it's a small – if I had to – if if I needed something that I could literally put in my pocket or put in a cell phone pouch and I was concealed carrying – this would be what I'd have to take out of my safe and use. And it's, it's, it's reliable, but uh, it just, I'm, I'm not accurate with it. It's not comfortable. Like you said, self-defense situation. If you're just pulling and shooting, if it's close up, you're not looking at your sights or you just want yeah. something that's going to go bang. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's not always a self-defense situation like that. If you do have the opportunity to take an aim shot, or you're pointing it at the guy saying, get back, get back, get back, and he just keeps coming at you, and you're going to try to put it in the head or the chest, and instead you, you know, shoot him, uh, uh, you, you uh, shoot over his head, or you shoot, you shoot over his shoulder, or something like that, um, it, then, then uh, you know, that's something to take into consideration, because that situation could happen also, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's it's a little gun. I, I got it because I wanted a, it's a surplus gun and I wanted a mill surp and sure. I I thought it would be kind of neat and um, I I don't like it but I'm not going to get rid of it because I I like the mill surps for the historical stuff. But yeah, I hope I I hope I don't ever have to go to that for concealed carry. Yeah. Well, you know, hey, we've got some great recommendations already popping up in the chat, and that's kind of what I was hoping for here. Uh, Leatherface said get an LCR and 357 mag. That's the other one I was considering, that or 38 Special. Uh, Casino Boss says a Glock 42 and a Vetter pocket holster using Underworld Extreme Defender Plus P. Um, it's hot in Mississippi nine months out of the year, and I shoot it well. Small pistol I'm comfortable with. I had a Glock 42 for quite a while, and I did like it. It was a neat little pistol. I mean, it, I was kind of curious about them when they came out and, and picked one up. Um, let's see. Tacos and French Fry says that he has an original LCP, but we'll get an LCP too soon. How do you like it? So, yeah, you know, you got your LCR, you got your LCP, your LCP too. Um, 
the uh, Smith and Wesson bodyguard. I know a lot of guys are, are big fans of that one. And it took me about a hundred rounds to get used to, but that was a neat little gun and you can get those with the laser on them and a sticky holster and, and just really, really comfortably carry it. Um, somebody was saying the DB 380, I'm not familiar with the diamondback firearms. They make uh, some compact nine millimeter and 380 pistols. And I don't have any experience with them other than just looking up the specifications on them online. Um, I know they also make their own ARs and they make their own full size pistol and they make a variety of different guns. They're American made. I think that they are owned. They're in Florida. They might be owned by Caltech now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I don't think there's really any problems with their firearms. But I mean, check out the DB380 or the DB9 if you're looking for something. Now, if you're going to pocket carry, my recommendation to you, and I know that Matt, NEA Matt, Never Enough Ammo Matt, has one of these on a screen share with you real quick. The um, Aegis Armory uh, trigger guard that they sell. Uh, this is probably what I'll do if I get myself an LC. I think Matt's got an LCR, and he has a setup kind of like this with the little trigger guard that goes over it. And you can put a clip on this uh, this trigger guard, so when you pull the weapon out, that uh, trigger guard's going to pop off. It's just a little Kydex cover, or you can just pull on the string, or you can loop it around your belt loop. So when you pull the gun out, uh, that 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 little trigger guard's going to pop off. So you want to definitely, I'd highly recommend this versus not carrying one in the chamber. I would say carry one in the chamber and have the trigger guard on it, and then you're going to be good to go. I think they're maybe 15 or 20 bucks for that little trigger guard. But that would be the way that I would go if I'm going to pocket carry. Whenever I pocket carry the J22, I mean, I'm always a big proponent of pocket carrying with um, one in the chamber, but I don't with the J22 just because it's such a basic, crude, simple pistol. I'd be worried about that safety not working or that uh, that that uh, firing pin block failing. Getting, you know, that's why I don't I don't carry one that one with one in the chamber. But any other time, if I was going to get an LCR, obviously LCR, but LCP or LCP2. Uh, or a bodyguard, and I had one in the chamber, I would have some sort of a trigger guard over it. So that'd be a, a recommendation to you. What do you guys think at all? Any thoughts on that at all, the pocket carry? One of the uh, range officers at the range that I go to just got a Kimber Micro and the 9mm. Oh, oh okay. I, I really like it. I think it's a nice I think it's a nice firearm, and it's pretty small. You could definitely fit it in your pocket if you needed to. He open yeah. carries because of the rules at the range. But the Kimber Micro is pretty nice. Has he actually? I, I tested a, a Micro. I don't know if it's the Micro, the Solo Nine, and it was, it was, it would not run. I ran four different brands of ammo through it. I tried running Federal Brass, and it was clean when I took it out. And it barely been shot. Winchester Y Box, Remington UMC, and it actually fired the Federal Aluminum case. I could get through one magazine with it. Has this guy actually fired this thing before or not? Yeah, he's fired it. I, I, I've actually put a hundred rounds through it myself oh my at the God. range. There must have been something and, uh, that, must have been that wasn't good. Maybe the mag springs or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. I, the only problem I had with it is he has the uh, little green uh, fiber optic sight on the end, uh -huh. and that that fell out. But I was able to find it, and you know he could put it back in. And uh, he said when he took it home, he was firing. Uh, he gave me federal brass. And when he took it apart, he said it was really, really dirty. So he was going to switch the ammo. Okay. But I personally put a hundred rounds through it, and it never, it never made one mistake. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, because if you're going to spend that kind of money, I think they're almost five hundred dollars or something like that. Um, he found his on the internet for a pretty good deal. Good, like good, he, good. He didn't pay full price for it. Okay. We uh, another, we do have some more. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Another little one that hasn't been mentioned yet is the NAA little revolvers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 22 Magnum they're good but you definitely need to practice with them you have to be conscious not to uh to to, to blow your hand off with them because they're so compact I mean they do shoot well I shot the 22 and then I put the 22 mag cylinder in it and had a blast with it that thing was awesome but you know a little tiny the one that I tested had a belt buckle holster that with the gun clipped on the front had a little slider switch that kept the gun in place and you could flip the switch and take the take the little revolver right off your belt buckle and it was ready to fire um that was actually made by naa but they're cool those are neat they're fun little guns and surprisingly accurate out to like i don't know maybe seven ten yards you can you can do a pretty decent center mass shot with them and uh, they're just a couple hundred bucks so, you know you got the derringer route you can go now granted like the bond arms they're going to be heavy but if you want the ultimate in simplicity, you know, you give yourself, and some of those, those uh, Bond arms come what? And they, I don't know if they make a 44 mag, but I'm pretty sure they make a 357. They make a 9 millimeter, uh, a 380, a 45 ACP. So you've got a lot of options if you go that route too. Now they're not cheap, but they are cool little niche guns too. I think they're, I think they work well. 
Um, over on the gun channel side, we've got Patrick saying that he shot the Ruger LCP2 in 380. And before he bought it, he said it's a great little gun. Dead Horse picked himself up a Phoenix 22 for 40 bucks. I've been interested in one of those. They make a two barrel version. They make one that's got a longer target barrel that you can get for like $125 on Classic. You can um, buy that barrel separately too. Yes. Yeah. 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 And right, I think they're another company it. that's got a lifetime warranty on the gun too, if you care about it, you know. Um, towards TCP, I'm, go ahead, Tony. I'm tickled to death with that Phoenix HP 22. I really am. I should pick one of those I, up. I'm, you know, they're I, they're fun to shoot and they're yeah. I have actually killed squirrels with it. Oh, what about what do you just iron sights on that thing? Does it have an adjustable rear sight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they make a lot of different combinations and packages and deals on that HP 22. Um, I got a buddy who's he's got a YouTube channel, Jay Dalton. He's a big fan of the Phoenix, and he's done a lot of videos on that particular pistol because he put a lot of wear and tear on his, and he's worn parts out on it before, and the company's been great about sending replacement parts. Uh, you got a lifetime guarantee on that one, too, and that one's run a lot of rounds before it needed any kind of maintenance. Um, Vanessa says, Captain Crunch, regular yum candy in a box. Yes, it is. Uh, Patriot in the Dark says, I'm carrying my Smith & Wesson 442. Always use a proper holster from Vanessa. I love my Bond arms. Yeah, they are, they're really nice guns. Uh, we had the lady, the lady bond. My wife had it for a while. <laughs> After we got it, we bought it because we thought it would be perfect. Her finger couldn't comfortably reach the trigger because it's so drawn out as with that Derringer design. We ended up selling it, but it was still pretty cool. Uh, I'm trying to see if we have anybody else saying anything. Used to pocket carry a P230A, but the hammer would dig into my leg when I sat down with the DeSantis pocket holster. The Taurus TCP. Okay, that's another one. Um, those are relatively inexpensive. You can sometimes pick them up for 200 bucks, a little bit around $200. Um, the problem I had with the TCP, that's the 380. It's like the little six or seven shot 380 semi auto, was that it, the magazine kept popping out when I was shooting it, no matter how I held it. And so, I mean, I could fire it, but if I didn't hold it just right, the magazine would, and it's just because it has a little nub of a button that kind of rests where your, where your uh, middle finger sits. And so that's um, kind of a, it's kind of, I don't know, I love that little gun. It was so lightweight and it was easy to shoot, but yeah, the TCP, I want to say it's, is it called the 738 maybe? I don't know. But that's definitely one to check out, too, if you're looking for one. Uh, Cadillac Jack is saying the Smith & Wesson 642 Airweight 38. Tony, what would you recommend for a brand of revolver if somebody wants to get a, a pocket carry revolver? What would you go with? Smith, Ruger? If you're wanting to be cheap, I would go with Ruger. Okay. If you're wanting to be a little bit more upscale, Smith. Okay. Yeah, LCRs, I think you can get into one for probably 375 for a brand new one uh in 380 i think the 357 is closer to 400 dollars. but you know we see specials and deals on them all the time and then you can option option them out with lasers and and fun stuff like that too so that's i have a, I have a, a question real quick travis yeah go ahead man what uh what do you guys think of the bursa you know i've seen a couple videos lately on you know comparing uh, the bursa to, yeah. obviously you can see yeah. i'm a big fan of ruger I, I love them. I've always wanted to get a Bursa Combat. I just think those are cool. That's the, the black and OD green one that they sell that's got the slightly molded design for carry. I know Yankee has said that Yankee Marshall has said that he has seen or heard or knows people that's had or he's one of, he's go he's been to a gun dealer that said that they have frame cracking issues. But I don't know how many rounds that would take to happen. Maybe they just had a bad run of them. They've been around for a while. You can get great deals on them if you don't mind getting, say, the dual, the two tone. Um, I'd consider trying one. They're they're not light because they're all metal. So they probably weigh close to you can look it up. They probably weigh close to 16 ounces loaded. Um, but again, I, I you know they have different options that you know they've got they've got different capacity sizes you can buy, different sizes. You know, I'd I'd consider trying one. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna how you carry it could be a little bit, I don't know if you're gonna want to carry it with one in the chamber and the hammer down, or if you're gonna I don't know if you can do a cocked and locked on that. I'm assuming you can with the hammer back and the, the safety on. Uh, I consider getting one just because I'm a fan of the Walter PPK and it's, it kind of mimics the design of that. So, so yeah, I would say definitely check, check one of those out too. Do you, have you ever fired one before David? No, not the Bursa. Uh, I've, I've fired the LCPs and <clears throat> the next, the next pistol that I'm going to get is going to be a Ruger 380 in the LCP or something along that lines in the Ruger. Uh, but I haven't fired a Bursa yet. I just noticed a couple guys that, you know, the <clears throat> videos I watched, they've been putting out Bursa stuff. Are those available in the state that you're in? Can you get a Bursa Thunder with no problems? I haven't even looked into it. I have no idea yet. Okay. You know, it's it's the Bursa name is completely new to me for maybe okay. two two weeks now. 
They've, I know uh, Midnight Range TM has a larger semi-automatic Bursa, either a 9 or 40. He's got a, a larger duty size handgun. They, I mean, they make they make more modern, you know, like like carry-style semi-autos also. I don't know if they're standard issue for the Argentinian police force, but they are made in, they are made in Argentina. Um, I, you know, I'd, I'd consider picking one up. But then again, when you look at the price, when you buy one, I mean, they can be close to $300 or $275, 300 so you'd almost maybe want to consider looking at that that LCR two or I'm just not the LCR two the LCP two or maybe an LCR you know something that's possible if you need to get a repair it's going to be easier to get it done um, supporting local economy American made obviously um, I can't remember what the other one was I tested a, a Colt 380 little micro pistol and that thing was a blast I can't remember what it was called I have to look at my channel but um, yeah no definitely definitely got a lot of options out there for it. Um, again, so again, consider how you want to carry it. Make sure you can get some kind of a holster for it. You can get some sort of a trigger guard for it. Um, the other one is when it comes to ammo for that gun. Now, now carry ammo is going to be a separate topic. We're going to talk about it a little bit later on. But when it comes to ammo, if you go to Walmart, if you buy ammo at Walmart, they carry, I believe, a federal Hydroshock that's made for short barrel um, pistols. And I remember watching a video on shooting the bull 410 over on YouTube. He's got one of my favorite channels. He doesn't make videos anymore. But he does a lot of ballistics gel tests, and he was decronoing that short barrel ammo, and it was performing just as well. It was actually performing better than the the standard ammo, the non short barrel version of that Hydroshock ammo, because the powder is dissolved. It's designed to burn faster, so you get a more efficient burn out of a shorter barrel pistol, like a, like say a two and a half inch revolver or a little two point seven five inch semi auto. Um, so the uh, the high, you know, that's definitely check out the kind of ammo that you're going to carry in it, and they do make ammo for short barrel firearms for you know concealed carry right off the bat i would recommend say a uh, hornaday uh, critical defense or maybe a, a critical duty would be an ammo would be a round that i would go for but i know there's a lot of you've got lehigh that's out there you've got geez rip ammo there's all these different companies you definitely want to do some research but i'd say critical defense would be a solid choice for any of your pocket carry pistols uh gary's joining us gary what's going on man what's new in your neck of the woods or prairie no, no. All right. <laughs> a whole lot. I'm just joining you from my daughter's house in lovely El Dorado, Kansas. Awesome, awesome. Been through there before. Been through there. Uh, question for you, sir. Uh, what do you pocket carry, or do you have a recommendation for pocket carry and ammo? What do you What do you recommend? I always pocket carry. That's my uh, method of choice. Cool. When Good. I'm We've got wearing, a yeah. When I'm wearing jeans, I wear I carry my Glock 42. And when I switch to shorts or something like that, I go back to my Taurus TCP just because it's a little bit lighter, less weight on the, on the, uh, you know, on the shorts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. As far as carry ammo, it always Hornady Critical Defense. I've been okay. doing that ever since I started carrying. Okay. It feeds well. I don't oh yeah. Have any yeah. feeding issues and uh, it's just good quality ammo. The critical defense, I know the cases they use, I think like a nickel finish case, and it's designed not to corrode. It's got a low flash, a low flash powder in it. It's got the little plug in the end of the hollow points. It'll penetrate through layers of clothing before it starts to expand. Um, you know, something interesting about that ammo, I just want to talk about this for a sec, and we can meet, well, we'll save this for later. We'll talk about critical duty versus critical defense and kind of my philosophy on which one you should go with, because I'm kind of having a change of mind about which one to, to consider. Um, and you know, Gary, what we had said before is when it comes to pocket carry, I mean, it's whatever size you are, whatever. I mean, some people could comfortably pocket carry a Glock 26 for other people. It could be like a little Smith and Wesson bodyguard for others. It could be a PT 111 G2 or a G2C Taurus. Um, you know, it just kind of depends on the person and what they're comfortable doing. Me, I like to go for the most compact pistol. I feel like I can effectively shoot. So that's what I go with, but I am in the market for a pocket pistol right now and I don't know what to go with. Uh, I really like the LCRs. Go ahead. I've went back and forth. Um, I actually do own a LC9S, and that's just about the same size as a Glock 42. Mm -hmm. I, I went with a 42 because I I can handle shooting the 380 better as far as recoil, mm -hmm. and I went with the larger Glock 42 because it's just easier for me to get on target. Okay. I can consistently get on target with that. It's a little bigger, so I've got a little bit more on my hand, uh, longer sight radius, and it's just—it's not any more quality. I don't—I never had any problems with the uh, TCP. It's just I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, the LC9S is fine. It's just a lot of recoil for me. I don't shoot it as well. So that's the thought behind what I've carried. But I've also pocket carried a Taurus 85 revolver, but that's pretty difficult to get in and out of a pocket, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah. And it's heavy. Um, Sarge over C4 defense is saying I love my G42. Um, you know, and the thing is, if you look around, if you go, if you ever purchase, if you're in any gun groups or gun forms that, that sell firearms, um, those Glock 42s, a lot of times you can pick them up used for $100, $150 below retail. So you can get some really good uh, deals on the price too, if you look around. Um, you know, so definitely, and that, and that's another thing too. I've noticed this. I'm on, I'm on MeWe quite a bit. And if you guys don't know what MeWe is, it's a social networking platform. What it is, is basically Facebook, but they don't data mine you and they don't sell your data. And they are open to any group that wants to join just as long as you're not breaking state or federal law. But all the gun groups that got booted off Facebook went over to MeWe. And I'm in quite a few Nebraska gun groups and they do a lot of buying, selling and trading of guns legally, of course. And um, a lot of the pistols that show up are pocket pistols and compact pistols. I think a lot of people buy them with certain expectations. It's going to run and function like a midsize or a full-size pistol. And they realize that it could be uncomfortable to shoot. It's kind of unwieldy in the hand. It doesn't give them the ergos they're hoping for. So you can really get some good deals on pocket pistols, especially in some of those groups. More often than I tend to see with full-size guns, too. So I'm not sure if that's just kind of a phenomenon with gun owners or maybe somebody buys it or maybe they upgrade to something better. But do look around. You know, obviously, I'm a proponent of buying from the mom and pop gun store, whoever your local FFL is. But if you do look around, you can get some good deals on prices, too, if you check them out. Um, but again, do be careful with the ammo that you choose for that pistol. Do some research, maybe watch some videos, make sure it chronos how it says it's going to chronos. Because a lot of times, you know, the ammo on the box, they've tested it out of a four inch barrel pistol or your rifle ammo. They've tested it out of a 20 inch barrel where it's going to get maximum velocity. Because you want, especially if you're going to carry a 380 and you've only got six or seven rounds, you want to make sure you've got the most effective round pistol combination you can have that's going to save your life. So that's important to consider. Um, guys, do you have any final thoughts on pocket pistols at all or anything you'd like to say about that? Any any ideas or any anything you should not do? Any recommendations and things that people should stay away from if they're, you know, what, anything I you guys would, say? Yeah. I would recommend taking, you know, M making your pistol safe, take all the ammo out of it and make sure that you can get that thing in and out, you know, out of your pocket with the, without the holster coming out with it. And that's kind of tricky. If mm. you haven't done that, that's the biggest thing to make sure you can get that out smoothly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that it doesn't stick up above the top of the pocket and stuff like that. And that you can sit down, stand up comfortably, you know, Give it a try. Don't wait until the in the moment of truth to see if you can get that out of your pocket. You know. Oh, Crack definitely, it. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for ammo recommendations, Casino Boss says I'm lucky that Underwood Extreme Defender has almost the same impact point as my primary practice ammo at 10 yards and my G42. Especially since the Underwood is plus P. Yeah, and that's another one. Make sure that you're carrying ammo that's rated for your gun. If your gun can handle handle plus P run it if it's not obviously you don't want to do it d 62 has to take off man thank you for joining us i do appreciate it and again uh, sarge c4 is joining us over in the chat over on the youtube side let's just see real quick if you have any questions or comments over on the gun channel side usually i have to i'll refresh that uh ozzy says i use underwood extreme defender sounds like that's a solid ammunition um ozzy that underwood ammo is 380 that the ammo in 380 is like nine millimeter penetration performance so, again, sounds like a good choice. Oh, the Colt Mustang. Okay, Dead Horse said the Colt Mustang. Yeah, I tested one of those. It was very accurate. It was very lightweight. They're not cheap, but they are cool little guns, and I believe I tested it in 380. I believe they're 380s. Uh, Colt Mustangs are awesome. That's a neat little gun, too. I know they're polymer and steel, but that's definitely one, uh, one recommendation that I have for you. Now, here's the big question, guys. If you're going to go buy a pocket carry, since we're talking 6 plus 1, Five plus one, seven plus one, depending. Let's say a like compact pistol, micro pistol, compact pistol. Do you want to go the revolver route or do you want to go the semi-automatic route? What would you guys prefer? I want to run this one through the panel. Tony, what would you say? Would you go revolver or semi-auto for a compact pocket carry pistol? I would go revolver just because of sight radius. Okay. Okay. More accuracy, better at. But what about reliability? What do you think about something like that? Pocket lint, things you got to worry about? Would the revolver be the more solid choice, you think, in the end? I don't think it matters that much. Okay. If I call the gun, it's going to work. Okay. 
Okay. I know I'm almost thinking maybe go more of the revolver out because in an extreme situation where you might not be thinking or you need to defend yourself or you might have limited time, pulling that revolver and pulling the trigger is, you know, that's, that's about as simple as you can get for self-defense. Yeah, uh, and if it misfires, all you got to do is pull the damn trigger again. Yeah, this is true. You don't have to sit there and work the action and clear around and take out the magazine. And it's a good point, Tony. Good point. And I've, you know, we're talking six, six rounds, you know, 38 special plus P. Uh, Squib, what do you think? What are your thoughts on that? Would you go revolver or would you go semi auto? Uh, I don't think I have an answer for this one. I mean, they both have uh, their. Rocket, slingshot? Yeah. Um... <laughs> well, if you were going to get one, what's kind of your thoughts? What's your philosophy on what you should carry in your pocket? What should somebody do? Uh, you know, yeah, I, my, my, <laughs> my opinions on pocket carry are probably as, as far off from everybody else as my opinions on everything else in the firearms. I, I, here's the thing. Uh, I'm probably, even though I have a gun that I can pocket carry, I probably never will. So I really just, I don't have an opinion. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do. It just, it's not for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, you really can't go wrong with just a good old fashioned revolver. And you can get, you know, cheaper revolvers. You can get a Taurus Poly Protector uh, 357 for $250. I mean, two two seventy five. You don't have to spend four or $500 either. You got a lot of budget options. Definitely go out there and do your research on the price points and uh, pick the pick the pistol that you think is going to be the best for you or definitely try to test it beforehand if you can or borrow one, like I said before, so you're not disappointed with it. But understand, go into it with some expectations that it's not going to be the same thing as your carry gun or your duty uh, pistol or your full-size handgun. You know, you're going to have to definitely train with it. That's probably one of the most important things. Uh, Sandhills, what do you think, man? What's your opinion on it? Do you semi-auto revolver for just straight-up pocket carry? What's, what's your take? Oh, he's working right now. We'll see if we can get him to come back. Okay, Jim, what do you think? I'm not super big on pocket carry either, but I'd probably, I'd probably want to go with semi-auto because they're just slimmer. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I don't. I'd feel weird with something like that, and it'd have to be like a cargo pocket on cargo shorts or something, anyway, for me, but. Uh, I think I'd, I'd want to go a slimmer that you could stick in a holster. Have you held an LCR before? I, I don't know if I've actually even held one. Are they just fairly wide? Are we talking a couple inches wide with the It's the really or? not super wide. Yeah, I'm just kind of that. Of it's just that bulge with the cylinder, I think, would feel weird. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's all very subjective. <laughs> I don't yeah. have any objective facts to back up my opinion. Sure, sure. No, no, I hear you. I hear you. And again, I definitely need to test the waters and just see what, what would work out and just handle a bunch of different models and stuff. And like I said, that, that Diamondback, the DB9 and the DB380, I was maybe considering that. I know some of you guys out there watching this have them and they run fine and they're relatively inexpensive. They're light. I think they weigh like eight ounces dry, which is like nothing. Um, well, we have a we have a P238 that it would probably be a decent candidate. It's a little big for pocket carry, in my opinion, but that's... That's if you're going off a uh, typical jeans pockets, not cargo yeah. pockets on shorts. Yeah, but uh, yeah. carrying it, you'd have to either carry it without one in the chamber or carry it cocked and locked. And I don't know how well that mixes with pocket carry. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I know some a few guys in the chat were saying that they do that or how they do it. A few guys said that it's hard to do because the hammer digs into their leg when they're walking or they sit down with it. Right. Um, you know, you might want to consider maybe more of an ankle holster setup if you're going to go that route. So. <laughs> ankle got hammers to think them. about with most yeah. revolvers too yeah 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 this is true this is true um although i think yeah, you can get those lcrs with a contained hammer with the with the hidden hammer with the whatever yeah, you then you're double action only and you got to yeah you gotta train that to understand how well you shoot it and this is true there's a lot of trade-offs no matter which way you go tony i'll tell you i can't stand a pocket knife in my pocket if it's longer than three inches I mean, so pocket carrying a handgun is not for me either. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it with the Phoenix a couple of times, but it's not something that I would choose to do. Well, you know, things like the Phoenix or the J22, they are heavy, you know, all metal guns. They're not light. I mean, they they probably, I don't know what the weight is off the top of my head, but they're probably 12 ounces or something like that, 13 ounces, and they're solid. So, I mean, you're going to know what's there, especially if you don't like having uh, you know, things in your pocket or just, just whatever heavy weights in your pocket. It could be uncomfortable if you're trying to use it. 
Um, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a tricky subject because everybody's different and everybody has different feelings about what they want to shoot or what they want to carry or what they think they want to carry. So, but do test the waters. I mean, that's the best advice we could give you is check out a variety of, of guns. Go to Tulsa. Go to Tulsa this fall. Go to Tulsa next spring. You can hit every table and and test. You know, feel all those pocket pistols in one place in one day, and then you can make your choice by the end of the day, and you're all set to go. So just. Yeah. Tell the guy at the table before you stick it in your pocket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying put it in your pocket. I'm saying, you know, see how it feels, handles, weight. Uh, ask him, say, may I pocket this to see how it's going to feel in my pocket? You know, maybe wear typical pants that you're going to pocket carry if you're going to do that. But, uh, yeah, no, don't just put it in there and walk away. It's going to be a very bad thing. Uh, <laughs> not go well for you. No, no, not at all. No, no. Gizzard Gary, what do you think? What, what, what would you recommend to somebody? Semi-auto or revolver for somebody in the market for a pocket carry pistol? What are your thoughts? Uh, I prefer a semi, but I have looked at and thought about checking out the LC9 or the LCR. LCR, yeah. Uh, I'm, man, I don't know. I'm up in the air. That I've tried to carry, you know, the uh, the hammer does get to be an issue after a while. Also, the grip size on it is just a little too big. Uh, but whatever you do, and you will also find that different brands of jeans have different size pockets. So, there are some of my pairs of jeans don't don't work well for that at all. Others have nice deep pockets. You also want to make sure that you have a decent holster, pocket yeah, holster. Yeah. Don't go cheap on that. I my favorite is the Desantis Nemesis. Oh yeah, oh on yeah. That because it's a good sturdy holster that fits in there another thing most people well most people know this but it's important is don't have anything else in that pocket but the gun yes don't have change in there keys in yes there, nothing else just mm -hmm. one pocket for the gun and uh it is a matter of getting used to when i first did it i walked around the house for a week while i was on vacation you know with a with an empty pistol in there just to get the hang of see if that's something i could do it's yeah. not for everybody, definitely. I mean, you can oh, yeah. tell it's in there. And, uh, you know, getting up, sitting down and stuff like that, it's something you get used to. And some people just probably aren't going to like it. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of considerations. But I I like carrying that way. And for me, <laughs> the semi that I carry just, it lays a little flatter in the pocket, a little less obvious, mm -hmm. easier to get in and out. Not that the other wouldn't work if you, you know, you could make that work too. It's just a matter of how big you are, how your jeans fit. There's a lot of considerations there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, a little a, side note ahead. here. Uh, as yeah. far as the bulge in your pocket, you know, people tend to overstress or stress about printing. And most people that see you with the gun in your pocket are going to have no idea it's a damn gun. Yeah. Only us concealed carriers and guys like that would even think that. Yeah. You know, so. They're just going to think you're happy to see them. <laughs> I was waiting for that joke to pop up at some point. I here. had my wife ask me that yesterday, <laughs> just out of the freaking blue. <laughs> <sighs> oh, God. That's like a TV commercial. When the time is right, pocket carry that LCR. <laughs> Uh, oh geez. All right. So a couple little, uh, some good, some good tops, some good ideas coming up over here on the YouTube side. Um, we've got uh, Vandalistica vlogs that's saying pro tip, don't pocket carry in sweatpants, sweatpants. No yoga pants. Yes. Uh, let's see what else we have going. It does me. We have an Android app. Yes, they do. It works really well. Georgia trucker says LCR, no hammer. LCRX has a hammer. Okay. This is good to know. Another thing too, if you are going to pocket carry daily, definitely clean that gun apart, take that gun apart and clean it once a month. Because you're going to get crud and lint and crumbs and all kinds of garbage in that that action. So make sure that you do keep it clean. I mean, I'd say at a minimum, you want to do it for one month, every month. Uh, Sean Pondery says, pocket carry the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan that I own and Travis tested recently. You know, that's possible, but it would take a certain kind of pants. And Sean Pondery says, where are the JNCOs or JNCOs? Those are like the big saggy pants that were popular with hip hop and stuff back in the early 2000s. Always had like patches on the back of them. You could probably pocket carry just about anything with those jeans. The pockets and those things were huge. I mean, they were they were uh, definitely something that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you'd want to try to pack, pocket that uh, Ruger Super uh, that Super Red Hawk Alaskan. So, uh, not sure if if I have any blue pill rounds. <laughs> All right, um, Leatherface says a 357 LCR doesn't print even if you're fat. I'm gonna test that. 
theory, Leatherface, and we'll see what happens here. So um, anyway, all right, you could pocket carry air pistols in, in, in the back pockets. Yes, you could. The back pockets on Jinkos were huge, man. You could stuff small woodland creatures down there. You could use it as a game pouch when you're out hunting. You could do whatever you want to do. Um, so again, revolver versus semi just kind of depends. Uh, David, what do you think, man? If you're going to go the pocket carry route, what would be your your preference on being a Ruger guy, you got a lot of options. You've got your LCR, you got your LCPs and your ones and twos and, and X's and stuff. What would you do, David? Uh, I'm not a big fan of stuff in my pockets either, but if I was going to go pocket carry, I'd go with the semi-automatic for me personally. Okay. And uh, depending on your experience level, uh, if you're new to firearms, I would recommend you go with the semi-automatic because in a terrible situation, if you have to empty that magazine and you need another one, it's mm. easy to drop a magazine and pop another one in as opposed to opening up the cylinder or the barrel and dropping all the cylinders and reloading. You know, that can be problematic. Plus, also, you got to figure when you, if you're in a panic situation and you pull the revolver out and you're not experienced, are you going to cock the hammer every time and fire or are you going to pull the trigger? But for me... Just with my, you know, my experience, I'd go with the semi-automatic. Okay. So Just kind of looking around. Go my, ahead, guys. That is where my thinking is altered by the way I was trained initially, because my first training for several years was revolvers. So, you know, and I carried revolver for work for years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my so I, I noticed a lot of times at the range. There's there's not many revolvers. Most of the most of the people that are on the pistol side are shooting, you know, 1911s or your striker fires. Yeah, yeah. Um, a good piece of advice popping over here. I never thought about this. Casino boss says, in high humidity, I shoot out my carry ammo every two months and add fresh ammo. I know I can go a year, but practice with carry loads is a good thing. Yeah, it can be expensive. You know, basically a buck around, 75 cents per round on your carry ammo, depending on what you have. But definitely practice with it because it could print different than what you're used to with your your generic ball range ammo, you know. Um, again, a lot of a lot of LCRs and LCP stuff chats coming up over on the YouTube side. Just looking at it, you can get an LC9S for 249 online right now. Seven rounds, nine millimeter. I don't know if that's seven plus one or six plus one. Assuming it's seven plus one. You can get a regular LCP for, I think, PSA has them for 169 uh, over here on Buds, they got them for 199 if you want a certain color, 186 if you want all black, six plus one. Hey, um, David, they got your security nine over there for 298 over on Buds. And then those LCPs, you can get them in like 10 different colors. LCP twos are running about 255 right now. So you can get into a good solid pocket Gary gun for, for under, well, around $300 if you look at an FFL, ammo, possibly a spare mag. Um, I know Bud says a lot of free shipping and stuff. But again, if you can score local or if your local gun dealer will match the online prices, definitely go that route. So you don't have to drop a lot of change on a pocket carry pistol if you want to get into one. So, all speaking, right, we're going to go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Speaking of the Security 9, I've been wearing basketball shorts right now and I've got it in my pocket. Yeah. And, you know, it, obviously you can tell that there's something in my pocket, but you can't really tell it's a gun. And depending on what you consider heavy, it's not really all that heavy for these being basketball shorts. I had to tie them. You know, I can't wear them untied or they fall down, but it's mm -hmm. pretty, for, I wouldn't consider it a small gun, but it seems pretty all right to put in your pocket. Yeah, if you guys have never held a Security 9 before, man, it's about, it's it's smaller than a Glock 19, or about the size of a Glock 19, um, but it just fits the hand really well. It's a 15 plus one pistol made by Ruger. You know, I think they're cool. I wish that I wish they would make them in. They don't do a security forty or four. I know they've got the Ruger American pistol in a uh, forty-five, and I believe forty. But I wish they would make the security nine and other calibers because I'd love to pick up something else. You know, and that's got the uh, LCP two trigger. In it. How's the trigger on the security nine? Because it does use the same trigger mechanism as the LCP two. What are your thoughts on that? Do well, you like I, the fired, I fired them both, and they work really smooth for me. Uh, I don't feel like I'm snapping. On the trigger, okay. it feels pretty smooth. Okay. And uh, the the second round, you know, will pop off pretty quick as well. So I think I like them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that would definitely be one that I would steer somebody towards, especially if they want a nice defensive pistol. You know, I love the SD9 VE, but it would be a nice lower cost alternative to the SD9 VE also. Um, Smith and Wesson, which they're both good. Uh, warranties on that Ruger, I don't think they actually say, do they? I, I think it's lifetime. 
Smith and Smith and Wesson is is lifetime also. Does Ruger yeah. even say what their warranty? I've heard people send them in. Tony, you've sent your in, yours in before, yeah. and I out of warranty, I think they still do the fix just because they're a good company. Um, Ruger's got the best customer service I've ever encountered. Okay. Yeah, and I I, I tend to ask a lot of questions, and I've called Ruger's uh, you know one eight hundred number. I've sent yeah. them emails plenty of times, just asking them dumb questions and i've got a response every single time so that's cool i agree the that's customer awesome. service is fantastic yeah yeah and you know they do sell a lot of guns and they're actually able to keep up on it which is pretty good because a lot of companies you know a lot of people have to wait months to get a to get their gun back or it's, it takes you know a long time to get a response back from the company so no that's good they still run things the right way um, the next topic that we had was, and we've discussed this just kind of as a chat before, long-term versus short-term ammo storage. Somebody said, hey, I want to store ammo for a long time. I want to start stocking up. What do you recommend that I do? Uh, for starters, immediately, if you don't have the money to talk about it, to get yourself into a vacuum sealer, which we'll get to eventually, um, little silicon pouches that you get with stuff when you buy it, electronics, shoes, and so on. You can also go on Amazon and buy larger silica gel packets. And you can throw those in your ammo box with your ammo. Some guys like to stack boxes in their ammo boxes. Um, other people like to just do bulk dump. That's what I do with my 9mm and my 223 ammo and my 762 by 39 I just set it in the ammo case. And I, I, I might have occasional dented cases, but I've never had a problem with it before. You know, if you're somebody reloads, you might want to keep that ammo in as pristine condition as possible. Uh, Tony, what first, do you think, man? First thing hmm? is if you're in an area that has temperature swings such as we are you want to keep your ammo in a climate controlled environment in your house mm -hmm. basically. Uh, and as far as doing anything else it'll last for years and years and years without doing nothing yeah uh, Tony you I have a vacuum sealer don't you do you vacuum seal ammo at all or no. not I thought maybe nope. I thought somebody here on the on the chat had a vacuum sealer that these for I ammo AWAG was talking about that out in the okay. chat yeah, if you vacuum seal it, throw a silica gel packet in there, you're set for ever. <laughs> I thought about that for burying ammo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because as long as you keep it moisture free and the temperature is going to be relatively stable underground, you know, I'm I'm in the basement in this room and I've we've been in this house for almost three years and I've just used silica gel packets with all my ammo boxes. Um, everything stored in ammo boxes or everything's in, in you know, and I've and I put silica gel packets in the in the gun locker behind me. Um, and I've never, ever had ammo rust out. I've had it come out of the box looking crappy from the store, but I've never had an issue with it, um, myself. And it's relatively stable temperature down here. The humidity is about the same year round. It gets a little bit dry in the wintertime, but I don't think that's necessarily a problem, but temperature stable, you don't, cause I think the person was concerned about the ammo rusting out or going bad. And as long as you keep it dry, it should not be an issue. Yeah, uh, the, the yeah. big swing in temperature is what hurts more than anything. Yeah. Condensation could mm -hmm. become a problem then yeah and so if you're somebody who stores your ammo like out in the garage in a safe you might want to consider bringing it in the house uh some some way shape or form you could store it safely however you want to do it um yeah i keep it in the garage too, too. but but my garage is climate controlled too so okay okay well, we've got way too much humidity down here for me to think about any any term of storage out in the garage or non-climate oh, controlled. Yeah. Uh, in my dad's gun safe, he's got a rechargeable stack on uh, silica gel. Um, what do you want to call it? Just moisture absorbing device that he keeps in his gun safe. Yeah, dehumidifier. Thank you. Jeez, my brain's just like fried. It. I need more coffee. Um, I know that uh, Midnight Range yep. Game, I think he has one too. He did a, I think he did a, a gear test on one. And so far, it's been running great. It just, once the silica gel dot turns orange, he takes it out and plugs it in, which dries out the gel. And then he puts it back. It's a pretty good size little unit, about the size of like a Pop Tart box. And uh, he plugs it back in the wall. And when it's done, he takes it out and throws it back in the safe. And it's good for another 60, 90 days. Um, and that, you know, it's say it's 25 bucks for that thing, but you only got to buy one and it supposedly lasts I don't know, indefinitely. Uh, I know at some point it's probably going to wear out. And it also depends on your environment. You might be in a really high humid environment. And to me, this is kind of a big deal because you don't want your ammo going bad, especially if you're buying in bulk and you're buying a thousand rounds of every caliber that you shoot. And you want to make sure it's going to be dry and safe and functional if you need it, especially if you spend money on higher grade ammo. Say you do a lot of hollow point ammo or a lot of match grade stuff, you're going to be more picky with uh, keeping that that regulated at a minimum at a minimum silica gel packets 
go on Amazon or go online and buy some larger packets because uh, you can get like 20 packets for five bucks, seven bucks, or you can maybe even buy them in bigger bulk and then just throw one in every ammo box, put a couple in the gun locker. Um, if you've got, you know, throw one in, in with your pistol case or whatever, depending on how, what you do. And that'll definitely help out. Also, well, from a gun perspective, keep your guns clean. I mean, obviously that's going to help you prevent corrosion from happening, but um yeah, I would say that's probably anything else on, on ammo storage, guys. It's kind of a simple topic, but, you know, if you drop a lot of money on your ammo, you want to make sure you keep it well preserved. Uh, Foose over there on the chat says, oh. uh, with ammo, if you are comfortable, if you are comfortable, then the ammo is. Okay, well, that's, yeah, that's a good way to look at it, yeah. Uh, gun locker, use a golden rod. I've seen those, too. I've heard about those also, yeah. Uh, I'm shooting old 308 ammo from the 1980s through my SCAR. It's from Malaysia. I've already went through 700 rounds. It's old and accurate. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on how that ammo was treated before it got to you. If it was stored in a you know high moisture environment, did it ever get wet at any point at, at all? You know, if it's sealed, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, if you really are that concerned about it, you can get yourself a vacuum sealer. You can pick them up sometimes online cheap or just get a generic sealer with good quality bags, and you'll be fine if you want to pack your ammo up and save it. Um, so that's definitely something that uh, that you should do. You can use bought. something as simple as surplus ammo cans. Okay. So you can I'm go bought. to the gun show, you can go to the surplus store, get the military issue ammo cans, check them before you buy them. Make sure there's still the rubber seal on the inside of the lid. It's not dry rotted or cracked or split or anything. Usually they're not. Usually they're in, in pretty good shape. I mean, if this thing's really old and rusted and beat up, I'd, I'd be... Um, looking at it a little bit more so than one that uh, when it looks like they just took the ammo out of it and threw it on the pallet and off it went to, to what they call DMRO, Defense Reutilization Management. Anyhow, uh, those are good cans to use. Some people don't like them because they're a little bit pricey sometimes, depending on where you buy them, or they're heavy. So you can get the plastic ones, but with the plastic ones, you want to look for the same thing. Inside the top or the lid on the inside, there should be a rubber seal. Now, some of them have a cutout for a rubber seal, and there's no rubber seal in there. That's why every time I, I buy one, I open it up and just check and make sure that seal is present. If, you're, if you want to make sure that you get one that's definitely uh, more water resistant or water tight, if you go over into the boating section... They'll have the same kind of plastic cans, the Plano cans, that you can get over, say, in the sporting goods section of the store. In, in, the, in the marine section there, they'll have them, and they'll, they'll probably be orange, but mm -hmm. they'll, they're, they're definitely going to have the rubber seal then because mm -hmm. you're paying a little bit more for something that might float, but definitely yeah. uh, will keep the water out. The desiccant packs, yeah, you can buy them on Amazon in bulk. If you go over to the, uh, if you're in Cabela's or uh, Bass Pro, if you go over to the section where the safes are, they do sell the, the desiccant there. They sell the, uh, the dehumidifiers that you can put inside mm -hmm. the uh, safes. Safes and stuff, yeah. But uh, it, uh, the desiccant packs, you can also find them in all kinds of places for free. If you work in an mm -hmm. office and you've got copiers, check the toner. Mm -hmm. The new toner cartridges have desiccant packs in them. So be the one that volunteers to change out the toner when it goes bad. Nobody will fight you on that. Nobody ever wants to change out the toner. <laughs> this get is all true. the free desiccant you want. Yeah. I can speak I, from experience on that one. Yeah. I got free desiccant for years that way. Now, these bags will start to turn colors. They will start to go bad. Mm -hmm. So you want to every so often uh, change them out. But for the most part, though, simple ammo cans, plastic or metal ammo cans, are enough to protect your... Your, your ammunition from from humidity and uh whoever said uh keeping in a part of the house where the temperature stays the same all year round that is great advice that is i'm sorry i didn't catch you who said that but that that is great advice um it, the the ammunition can can hold up to a lot of things but um that's that's for when you've got it out in the field for immediate use if mm -hmm. you've been storing it for years and now suddenly you're out there on a 100 degree day, if it's been properly stored, it'll function. But if you just keep it out there 100 degree day all the time or uh, keeping it in the shed, keeping it in the garage, something like that, 
it's just it's not good for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a little discussion on those ammo cans too. A couple guys over in the chat were saying Walmart's got ammo cans for ten bucks. I know NEA Matt did a test on one. Never enough ammo did a test on one, and uh, it uh, it was fine. I believe that it stayed fairly water tight. He just bought one of the Chinese made ammo cans. You might want to get yourself some surplus ammo cans if they have the rubber seal, like you had mentioned before. You know, you want to watch for that. And, uh, and I will tell you that those cans seal both ways. If you ever uh, store spray paint in an ammo can for don't. years, I mean like <laughs> 10 years, right? And you go to open it, that lid may blow off. Yes. <laughs> it may just yes. ex open with explosive force. I don't know if that's uh, just spray paint or any aerosols. Could be the, the they, they may build up slowly, vapor. Yeah, yeah, leaving out of the so, can over time. Yeah. The, the, the fact that, yeah, slowly leaking out of the can over years and years and years, the fact that that lid will, when you open it, it'll blast open or fly off mm -hmm. is proof that it's airtight because it's held all that in all that time. All right. I got to get this question out. So, Squid, this might just be up your alley here. So, uh, guys, those of you that reload, Georgia Trucker says, what is the best way to dispose of ammo? My boss lady gave me about five to 600 rounds of reloaded forty five from her stepdad, and it is loaded too light to cycle my gun. So I don't know if it's 45 ACP or 45 cold. Let's assume 45 ACP. What do you guys think? Just get the... Does, does he want to dismantle it? Well, what, what's the best way to dispose of it? What do you guys recommend? If you don't want to deal with it, what do I you mean, think? I pull mean, pull the bullet, dump the powder. Yeah. Uh, I would think. But now if he's got a lot, that's going to take some time. Yes, yeah, so I'm so... like, five to 600. Have a party. Have your buddies that reload come over. Get them some... Uh, Get him some beverages and some 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 Doritos and put some music on or <laughs> put a podcast on and sit there and mass mass dis disassemble dismantle the rounds. Man, yeah. I don't know if you could get a gun that would fire it, you'd be sitting pretty good. You know, you can get a revolver that that takes forty five ACP or if it's forty five Colt. You know, when you say cycle the gun, I'm assuming we're talking semi auto. It's got to be forty five ACP. But yeah, I dismantle need, the rounds, man. Tony, what's yeah, up? I need to get in here because you should not shoot rounds from an unknown source. Okay, okay, this is true. Well, he said it's it's too it's it's loaded too light to cycle the gun, so he's tried it and it's not running. And I don't I mean, disagree with you. I mean, unless you talk to that person and you know they know what they're doing, yeah, I wouldn't it, recommend reloads unless it's commercially done or done by yourself. Yeah, only only one accidental double charge of a case, and you got real problems. This is true. This is true. So yeah, your best your best way would be not to shoot it. Would actually be to dismantle the ammo and then go through the whole process of hopefully being able to reuse it and reload it. I don't know. Maybe maybe still use the cases with the primers in them. I mean, uh, just to sell it back to a reloader. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, there you go. Dismantle it and uh, squib. When you do that, when you dismantle a round, can you reuse the bullet or not? Sometimes you can. Okay, so you could take it, and dismantle it into its components, and then resell it online. If you use the hammer, but God, I wouldn't want to do that with hundreds of rounds, man. That takes a week. <laughs> is there an easier way to do it? Is there a machine that somebody could buy? Or is there a more? I mean, I just, Squib, I just have the dismantler that you gave me, the little hammer that you gave me for it. But, yeah. They make a die to go into the reloading oh. press to pull bullets. Pull, pull okay. Them. Okay. So, Georgia Trucker, if you're a reloader, you've got an option for you that might be a little bit faster. I mean, you're still going to have to run through each five. It's a good problem to have. I mean, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know. If you're just interested in getting rid of it, uh, I know the local range that I go to, they have a can for any misfires or any, you know, uh, live ammunition that's found on the ground. You just put it in there and whatever they do with it, you know, and they said if you got ammo that you don't feel comfortable having, bring it here and we'll take care of it. They didn't say what they do with it, but they said they'd accept it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking you could sell it, but you might be better off going that route because that way you know the liability is now gone. I mean, you could tell somebody, hey, this this is not safe to shoot, but I want to sell it to you for the brass and the lead so you can use it, um, you know. Yeah. So Fu says the mechanical bullet puller is going to mar the projectile. I would imagine that too. Sell it on gun channels. There you go. Yeah. Put it for sale on gunchannels.com with, I don't know about shipping necessarily, but if you can find somebody local, toss it in a campfire. No steadily. Not a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, the chance that it could just pop and blow up. I, I, I got to say no on that. Um, yeah, it has some like a pretty good list. firecrackers. <laughs> yeah. That would make for some great firecrackers and watch out for the projectiles. So give it to gun website so we can sell it to fund the loophole. There we go. Yeah, set up an arrangement and get it over to uh, to G Webs. 
So yeah, it's kind of, I mean, hopefully giving you some safe advice here for what to do, but yeah, we'd, we'd recommend not, not shooting it. Sounds like you've already done it. It doesn't work. So, uh, you know, if you go on, like I said before, go to MeWe and get an account, join your local gun groups. You can definitely find somebody that would take it off you or buy it from you. So Foo says campfire is fine. Just stand back a bit. I'm still can't recommend that. I sell it at a gun show. There you go. There you go. Just do, just walk up or walk around and see if anybody wants it. So, <laughs> um, Anyway, all right, so we're going to move on to our last topic. This is a little bit of a shorter show today. I do apologize, but um, carry ammo. Let's talk about carry ammo. I want to run this through the panel. Self-defense ammo, home defense ammo, carry ammo. What do you guys recommend? What do you recommend? What do you, what are, what do you recommend? Tony, I want to start with you. What's your recommendation for carry ammo, self-defense ammo? What do you think? Uh, whatever you like. I don't care. I make my own. Do you think it's better to go with the hollow point ammunition with, I mean, do you recommend staying away from ball ammo for self-defense? No, hell no. You poke okay. holes in bad guys. That's all that matters. Okay. I mean, so you think the hollow points point. might be more effective, like maybe more of a chance of a one shot kill instead of just an over penetration and not doing that kind think, of, uh, it don't matter. I'm not going to shoot well, some bitch once anyway. You got a 44 mag, so I mean, you're you're kind of you know you're kind of above <laughs> the nine millimeter guys out there, the 380 guys. Well, now I'm carrying a nine millimeter. Okay, well that's right. You got your SD9 VE. Yeah. And I do I run hollow points in it. I okay. buy premium hollow points to load. Okay. To carry ammo. Uh, well, do you are you going with Hornaday bullets or who do you go through? Do you go through Spear or what? Do you, what are you running? Because I, yeah, I got Hornady X, X something or others. XDPs or X, yeah, yeah. They That's don't have choice. the little plastic thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's. I want a specific uh, load for a reason. I want to be able to handle a gun the best possible. I don't want to beat the gun to death, but I don't want it too weak either. So that's how I worked out what I'm doing with it. You know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And I can do it for you know, a tenth the price of buying it off the shelf and shoot the shit out of it if I want to. Yeah. The real expense is the bullets. Um, Vandaliska Vlogs, you know, he's down in Australia. He's got an interesting comment, and we'll keep going through the panel here. So many people who I've spoken to, not gun folks, are against HP ammo because it's cruel. So here's the deal, Vandal. If you're going to pull that gun to defend yourself, uh, you know, you're making a choice that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. And if you feel like you're in mortal danger and you're, <laughs> you need to stop that target as quickly as possible. So they can't do any damage to you or anybody else, any harm to anyone else. So if somebody thinks that hollow point is cruel when you're in a life or death situation and you have to shoot to kill because somebody's pointing a gun at you or they're charging at you with a knife or you need to defend yourself and you can't safely get away and it's a life or death situation. You need to, put that person down as quickly as you can. So that's why I would be, that's why I'm a strong proponent of self-defense hollow point ammunition. And that Vandal, that's just kind of the difference in kind of the environment, how people feel about self-defense and what they think about it. You know, another thing yeah. to think about too is over penetration of ball rounds. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I, I'll watch yeah. ballistics gel test and that stuff will go through 24 inches of, of ball ammo. Um, and with, with, with a self-defense situation, the situation that you're now being put into, cruelty is the last thing that you're thinking of. And if they still want to go on with that, tell them this. Uh, in, in America, when you go hunting, you've got to use hollow point or soft point ammunition because it's a more ethical kill for the animal. The animal doesn't suffer as much. So the same thing can be applied to putting down uh, a threat that's got two legs. Yeah, it's I just a difference would, in opinion, you know. Yeah. I actually would like to find a uh, jacketed soft point for nine. I would go to that instead of hollow points just for penetration purposes of clothing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's just not there. And I yeah. don't want plain lead. This is true. This is true. Um, Squib, what do you think for self-defense ammo? I mean, Sarge C4 is saying he's seen situations where ball ammo has gone through people, whether it's the bad guy or whatever, and not drop that person immediately. It wasn't a, it wasn't a critical hit. It wasn't a, uh, you know, fatal shot. And the person was still completely functional, especially if somebody's on something, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, not gonna feel it if you shoot them or they're not gonna go down as quickly as you want them to, if you're using ball ammo. 
School board, what are your thoughts, man? Again, that has 17. Of course, of course, yes, yes. But if you can only get one shot off for whatever reason, uh, you want to make sure it's the it's the most effective one possible. Again, I'm just trying. I'm yeah. always trying to pay. I'm always trying to pay in a worst case scenario because you might not have a situation where you get to do a mag dump or have to do a mag dump where you've got three seconds. Somebody's running at you because they're gonna take you down or they're pulling a gun on you and you need to drop them immediately. You know. Squib, what do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, mag, mag dumps and me don't don't mix. I've tried tried doing them, and it's it's pretty pretty messy. I was trained one shot, one kill. So okay. for those that don't practice enough, those that 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 um, don't uh, don't have any accuracy or or don't have the time or money or don't make the time or money to 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 practice and and hone their skills because it it's a perishable skill, a mag dump or Wanting a full auto, craving a full auto, is their makeup for uh, being able to hit it on the first shot. Now, that's not to say that every time I'm at the range, first shot with the handgun goes right, right in the bullseye. Not all the time, no. And that's because it's a perishable skill. I don't practice enough myself. But um, for carry purposes, I'm, I'm not thinking that I'm going to do a mag dump. Uh, but the... Um, the ammo that I've carried before has always been um, hollow point with a nickel plated case. Mm -hmm. The nickel plated is supposed to uh, feed a little bit better, a little smoother. And as far as when you're handling it, loading a magazine or uh, just uh, having it out in the environment all the time, you're carrying it under your, your clothes, you know, it's getting a little sweaty, whatnot. It's a little bit more corrosion resistant. So that's something you need to think about. You're going to be, I would recommend changing out your ammo every so often. Just oh, yeah. take it to the range and shoot it, shoot Burn it off it. and then just mm -hmm. reload. Yeah. How, how often that's up to that's individual um, reference case because you may not carry every day or maybe you're not a real sweaty guy like me. I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I always uh, carried hollow point. Now I have heard of putting one hollow point, one full metal jacket, one hollow point, one full metal jacket, alternating like that. I've never practiced it, but I mean, I've, I've loaded them and at the target at, at the range, just, you know, no feed issues with any time I've ever tried it. But as, as far as, uh, like something, uh, I did in the military or, or anything like that. And no, I've never used it, but I've heard that if you have that, then you have the option of having one that'll put down a person and another one that'll penetrate an object if you're trying to shoot through something. Yeah. The only thing is, um, I'm not expecting some sort of tactical Rambo situation where I've got to shoot the bad guy, then I got to shoot the other bad guy through a car fender. And so, but I've, well, I've we'll heard talk of it. about that in a second because I actually wanted to bring that point up because uh, I am thinking about taking Yankee Marshall's advice and switching my 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 grade of self defense ammo for for a reason and and we'll get to that in a second it's an interesting idea you know you got you got some good thoughts there you know we're not talking about close quarter combat here but all right well yeah, for, for self-defense you you're you're going to pay a lot more for that self-defense ammo mm -hmm. than you are for your ball ammo your ball ammo is what you typically you use when you're price, training right? practicing yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. it's it's a good idea to shoot some of that your carry ammo Every so often, even if you make it where it's just when you're just changing out your mags, mm -hmm. they've been in there a while, you're getting rid of it, and that's that's when you train with your carry ammo, yeah. if, if you're on a budget. But um, you're going to pay more for that ammo, but it's it's engineered a lot better as far as um, uh, that ethical kill, I guess you could say, or, or that being able to stop the threat. So um, the, I don't even know... Do, does any law enforcement carry full metal jacket? I don't uh, think so. You know, Not that I'm aware of. Saying no ball ammo at all. Ball ammo should be a no-no is what Sarge C4 is saying, and he's in law enforcement. I I can't imagine other than practice, and maybe they practice with hollow points. I don't know. Maybe they practice with their defense ammo just because it's going to give them the most realistic uh, accuracy and handling that they're going to deal with uh, in, an, in a you know real actual situation where they have to defend somebody's life. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. All right, uh, Jim. What I do you think, say, man? What's yeah? Go ahead, man. So I will say that uh, I get the whole one shot, one kill, you know, in a, in a defensive situation goal. But most handgun ammos, you know, you're you're probably gonna 
want to think more along the lines of a double tap. Most handgun ammo is not one shot, one kill, unless your shot placement is just yeah. absolutely spot on. Nervous uh, system and yeah, center right. mass. Yeah. Center mass. Yeah, I'm or, not against double taps at all. Double, I would say a double tap is better than a mag dump. Yeah. I mean, if you can't if you can't hit the target at all, then I guess a mag dump's better than nothing. But, right. but uh, then you're you, then you're missing half those rounds anyway, so you don't want right. To mag and you have to account way. for those. Did it go into a bystander? Did it do something? I mean, the thing is though, I've seen guys at the range, and uh, they get called out for doing mag dumps at my range because they're not allowed. Um, but there are other ranges around that do allow it. And they'll go out there, and they're not practicing their accuracy. They're not practicing their form and, and all the things that you're supposed to do in order to line up your sights and breathe properly and grip properly and everything else like that. They just go out there, and they just spray and pray. Well, if you practice spray and pray, when, when you actually have to use this thing to defend yourself, that's what you're going to go to. Mm -hmm. So I would say spray and pray is a last resort, but, yeah, one shot or a double tap. Uh, is if you can practice with that and, and get good at double taps, that's going to be a lot more effective, I think, than having uh, a bunch. I mean, you don't know. The situation could be you've got to shoot somebody that is, is threatening you and a bunch of other people, and somehow or another somebody gets in the way, and you've got, you know, 15 pieces of lead in the air instead of two. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as hollow yeah, your points ammo or stuff? Yeah, carry ammo, uh, I, I use uh, the Hornady XTP. Mm -hmm. uh, have the wife has a uh, spear gold dots, mm -hmm. uh, but realistically, th there's a lot of there's a lot of good hollow point choices. If you know, uh, there's there's spear gold dots. There's the I think the Winchester Ranger, uh, there's, there's yeah. federal. Yeah. There's I, yeah. The Rangers are what point. I normally carry. Uh, good bonded hollow points are, uh, you know, there, there's a number of brands and people, people swear by their preferred brand and say the other ones suck, but, uh, you know, yeah. again, I, I, I'm not totally sold on them, but I think they give you a good idea how an ammo is going to perform some of the ballistics tests that people do. Uh, if right. they perform it under the correct conditions, the way it's supposed to be done, as per the FBI standards, you're going to get a good idea what what an ammo is going to do. I mean, that's yeah, just, you're just going to see: is it going to make the 12 or 13 inches? Is it going to have a nice cavity? Is it going to make it through three or four layers of denim? Uh, right. You know, to give you the most. You know, effective shot. And like you have, you know, I, I bought a uh, I bought a couple of boxes of the the XTPs that were Freedom Munitions loads. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, different people load. The different people load the bullets, so you need to test those. And oh yeah, oh, the yeah. bullet's fine, but the way the loading might be subpar. So mm -hmm. this is true. Um, Gary, what about you? What is your your self defense or your your defensive ammo that you carry for your uh, your pistol? What do you think? What do you recommend? I usually carry Hornady Critical Defense. Yeah, uh, I just do. I mean. And I know everybody's mentioned all the good points about it. One thing I haven't heard mentioned so far is that supposedly the powder in there is a lower flash point than some, so it's not going to blind you quite as much. And Paul Harrell did a video on that mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Where there is a, I mean, there's still a flash there, but it is visibly less so yeah. than a lot of your other ammo is. That could be a consideration, especially in the dark. So, thought I'd yeah. throw that out there. But that's pretty much what I've always used. And I know you're probably about to talk about the critical duty here soon, so I won't <laughs> get into that. Hey, and you're just reading my mind. You know me way too well, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'll, and I'll explain why I feel the way that I do. Okay. Well, I think the other thing that uh, it's my understanding that most of your good defensive ammo is not going to have as hard a primer as okay. your practice ammo so you're not you're not as likely to get a, a light primer strike or uh, fail to fire or something like that so that's that's another thing to consider and test when you're deciding what you're comfortable with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i will say this when i had the video i did with the Taurus spectrum where i had problems with the light primer strike i did not have any with the hornady critical defense for what that's worth yeah 
That, but I mean, what what ammo did run good through that pistol though? When you tried it, did it did it run just ba basic ball ammo just fine or or not? It ran a. I didn't have any problems with feeding. The only problems I had at all were the the light primer strikes. Okay. And I I shot three different kinds of ammo that day, and two of them had occasional light primer strikes. And from what I've read, that's not uncommon on that pistol. Okay. Uh, and they're very ammo specific. Okay. Yeah, that, and you know the thing is, you definitely want to find out what's going to work because that you know that gun was designed for carry. That is, the gun was designed as a you know as a compact or maybe a backup pistol or you know a concealed carry. You want to make sure it's going to definitely do what it needs to do and, and get that correct ammo chosen for it if you want it to work. Um, let's see here. And David, what do you think? What do you keep for a home defense or a, a self defense ammo? Well, for right now, I just use a lot of the Walmart stuff, which is basically I buy a lot of the federal. Uh, mm -hmm. Maryland's pretty sticky about getting carry permits, so I currently don't have one of those. Uh, but my perspective on the defense uh, for home defense, I feel I feel like home defense and defending yourself out in the general public are two di very different things. Uh, the most important thing I would say is practice and be comfortable having whatever you're going to carry with you, whatever you're going to load with you. Make sure that's what you use the best. That's what you like the best. Uh, most importantly is be honest with yourself because once again, if you're at home, you know, you have your family, your possessions and different things like that. So you have something in the fight. If someone comes on your property or in your house, you have something to defend your children or their yeah. your wife, your husband. When you're out in the general public and a bad guy shows up and you're the good guy that needs to stop the bad guy, that's when you need to know who you are. And do I want to shoot this person and end their life? Am I capable of intervening in this situation? Uh, what's going to happen afterward? Mm -hmm. Because when, once all the smoke is settled, there's going to be red and blue lights there. Oh, yeah. There's going to be, yeah. you know, there's going to be time for court. There's going to be all kinds of stuff like that. So, you know, you see the guys at the range, like I said, somebody mentioned it earlier in the chat, just ammo dumping, praying and spraying. Well, I don't necessarily want that guy defending me. I want the guy that's going to know panic is a real thing, and I'm not a robot. I can make mistakes, and I have to be aware of where I'm at. Before, you know, a, a firearm is not a microwave. You know, you can buy a microwave, sit it on the shelf, don't bother setting the clock, and then just hit 30 seconds when you need to warm up your coffee. A yeah. firearm is a much different thing, and if you're going to carry a firearm out in public and be responsible to possibly have to use it, you have to be honest with who you are. And, uh, you know, you can't think that you're John Rambo and you're going to go out yeah. and, you know, save the day. You know, you have to be honest with who you are and the situation that you're going to be in of potentially ending another human's life. Mm -hmm. This is true. This is, and that's something that, you know, you, you think about every time or you know, hopefully you think about that when you do carry out in public and, and so on. Um, and again, like you said, it's a different thing when it comes to your home and your family and your property and you know yourself uh, versus being out in public. Um, from, I mean, go ahead. For my house, I, I keep all my firearms loaded with hollow points. Okay. And like I said, if you're in my house, I've got two big pit bulls that they're friendly <laughs> as can be. But yeah. if you come near the house, you've got a seven-year-old pit bull that's 80 pounds and a six-month-old pit bull that's 80 pounds. If you come in after you hear what they're doing, you mean business. So yeah. Yeah. If you, once you're in my house with the threat of the two dogs, I'm not really concerned about what happens afterwards. I'm going to do my best to stop you with as few rounds as possible. Yeah. No, I do agree. Um, one thing to consider, you know, again, about the ball ammo, it, it is inexpensive and you take it to the range. Um, you got to worry about over penetration. You got to worry about it going through drywall walls doors things like that i don't know if it's true or not but i've heard that hollow points would be less likely to do that but i'm not sure you know then you start talking about frangible ammo and stuff like that i would just say like you said you want to do the you want to you want to defend yourself with as few rounds as possible 
consider the hollow point rounds as your self-defense rounds if you're not sure what to go with. It doesn't have to necessarily be a certain brand. Uh, make sure that it does feed reliably through your firearm. Uh, do change it out. Do practice with it on a, if you can on a regular basis. It's a little, little pricey, but make sure you've got a good quality round to do so. Um, what I wanted to bring up was should I go from critical defense to critical duty? Now you say, well, you're not going to have to worry about, you know, it depends on, it depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to carry the gun out in public, do you want critical duty as a civilian or not? Should that be something that not, not something that only law enforcement can have, but should you carry a law enforcement grade uh, offensive round? Okay. Or defensive round, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, I'm going to say yes. And after watching Yankee Marshall's video, he makes a good point. When you're out in public, you're in a different situation where it could be a situation you might be at a mall, there might be a vehicle coming at you, you might have to get into a battle behind some sort of cover, right? Do you want a round that can penetrate through that cover to get to the bad guy? I'm not saying shoot blindly into, you know, an aisle that somebody's hiding behind, but you could be in a situation where you might have to have some sort of light barrier penetration depending on the situation, you might have to shoot through a door or whatever, you know, like, like say you're, you're somebody's coming at you and whatnot. If you're out in public, you're in a situation where you may need that extra, that extra bit of kick through that round. That's going to have the barrier in the glass penetration. Um, that's the only reason why I thought about switching over to critical duty is because I'm out in public a lot and I am carrying, and I could be in a situation where I might have to penetrate glass. I might have to shoot through something that might, critical defense may not make it through and stop the uh the bad guy that was the only reason why i was thinking i'm kind of having a different and he had a good point about that if he was at a mall and somebody was the bad guy was running at somebody and you had to take a shot through glass but your round's not going to make it wouldn't it be better just to carry the proper carry ammo for being out of your home per se i don't know what do you guys think about that is that just just uh, pointless thoughts or w would you ever consider going with a duty round instead of a critical defense round to have that extra bit of, of protection or not any well, thoughts on that? When I'm out and carrying, if I'm carrying a spare mag, it's got ball. Okay. Just, if I need to, I can switch mags and penetrate. Okay, that's a that's okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. You're gonna have something that's gonna go through. Uh, it's gonna do. You know, wouldn't have the expansion once you hit the target on the other side, but it's still gonna make it through, and that's what counts. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I was I was reading the the market the marketing slides on both of these and i, I guess if you're carrying it, it kind of depends on what you carry too i mean you can put critical duty in a smaller compact pistol but it, it the way that the way this marketing reads you'd, you'd almost want to use critical duty if you carried you know something with a you know kind of a upper size or full size pistol. Okay. But the, the, because the others optimize for, you know, the compact, maybe three inch barrel, yeah, etc. Yeah. This is true. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't know about tactical professionals, but at the end of the day, if you're, you're carrying, you got to be comfortable with what it's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. what the ammo is capable of doing if if so again that's subjective yeah. but yeah i'd probably I, I don't know if any of my carry ammo is marketed towards higher penetration or or whatnot but i've never purchased critical defense either so okay okay <laughs> I just know that the duty supposedly is more designed for for light barriers or for for glass and steel and things like that or metal or whatnot. But I definitely want yeah. something that could get through glass. Uh, you know, that's 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 a realistic situation. If you're especially, you know, if you're in your car and someone's approaching you, you're not going to roll down your window to <laughs> get you know get a shot yeah. off if the guy is yeah. trying to jack your car. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Again, there's a lot of a lot of interesting discussion over on the YouTube side. Guys are saying, you know, we're civilians. We're not going to need the full gear when we step outside, nor should we feel the need for that. I'm just thinking of what kind of what kind of obstacles you can encounter out in public in a situation. I'm always trying to paint a worst case scenario, just so simply you'll be uh, better prepared for that kind of a that kind of a situation. Pistols are defensive weapons, and that scenario is not likely to happen. I know, I know, but that one time that it does, you know, I'm always trying to to think 
will you be in at the best advantage you possibly can be? So Sean Pondery just says, I need to pack that 454 Ruger Alaskan, which uh, by the way, I've got 454 Casula ammo for it's coming up soon in the channel, but I don't know if I could easily conceal that. It's, 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 it's a Looney Tunes gun. I mean, that thing is just obscenely large, you know, and it needs to be because of what you're shooting through it. But I don't think I'm going to carry that out in public. I'm sorry, man. You know, but, Travis, uh, yeah. I, I think you or anybody should, you should carry what you're comfortable with. And, yeah. and I mean, I understand you're trying to, to get information on it or other people may be mm -hmm. watching videos of people who do reviews or claim to be internet gun experts. But um, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, whatever it is that you carry, yeah. it's whatever you think is best for either. These are This is the one that the research says it goes in the direction you want. Maybe you do have access to a private range where you can set up wooden boards or things like that and shoot, shoot yeah. them with different ammo and see Test what it does out. instead of just watching, watching somebody's video. Although, you know, some of these videos are done pretty well. I mean, they show building the target. They, they measure everything. They explain why they did this, this way, this, this way. I mean, um, I, I think that's where they, they're not, um, they're not necessarily being in, endorsed. They're not being yeah. paid by, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, ammo company X or whatever, but there's so many self-defense rounds out there. I mean, I'm not going to say one's better than the other per se, because they're, they're just so, I mean, they could all there, perform some that are, the that are, same in the they, end. You know, you might see similar performance yeah. ballistics or cavity expansion and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've got, they open up a little bit differently. So this one uh, chops up everything. This one, uh, blast out everything. This one turns to powder, so nothing comes out the other side. I mean, there's a lot of technology in these, so I think as long as you've got some sort of self-defense ammo, it, it's a good start, and if you can afford to, practice with it some and see how well it, it, it functions and and maybe let that be the basis yeah. of, of, of why you carry it. Um, maybe you're limited on price. And you've got to get some, you know, generic kind of jacketed hollow point. But true, I mean, true. I I do see where you're going though. Having something different for concealed carry versus home defense. I didn't think of it like that before, but I I've I've had frangible ammo for uh, the home defense gun, and you know, just because I didn't want to uh, penetrate walls or mm -hmm. less likely to, and I haven't carried frangible ammo out. Yeah you know, open or concealed carrying. So I never really put the two together, but I see your point. Yeah. No, it just, it just, I'm just thinking urban situations or situations where now we've got the attackers with the trucks running people over. We've got a lot of stuff happening out in public, you know, places where you know, I'm just thinking if you had to take some kind of cover, or you had to shoot through some sort of cover. But again, a lot of guys are saying highly unlikely. I'm always trying to paint the worst case scenario. So you're ready for it. Then anything less will be much more manageable, but no, it's just a thought I was having. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm about a that, point where I need to cycle through all my all my critical defense anyway, and I'll be buying more ammo soon. That, so it's like, well, what do I go with? You know? There's something to be said from both sides because, yes, more, more than likely, nothing's ever going to happen. More than likely, but ask the person that had something happen to him, and they say, "I thought nothing would ever happen." So I can understand somebody saying, "I'm as prepared as." I feel comfortable with, and I could see somebody else going. I'm prepared for everything all the time. So, <laughs> and it's like, well, both 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 arguments have a a, a legitimacy. Uh, it's just what what you're willing to do. There are certain things that I'm prepared for, or mm -hmm. um, try to prepare for, that I think are more likely. And there's other things that some people have said. Oh, why aren't you ready for this? Why aren't you? It's like, eh, just <laughs> you know, there's only so many things you can. Don't, only so many things you can prepare for. I mean, in the middle of a, a gun battle, are you going to go, oh, wait, I got to switch mags because uh, I need the one that penetrates. Oh, oh no, I got to switch so mags because now he's out in the open. glass and, and glass. Let me swap this mag out real quick, and I'll switch over to my uh... – <laughs> yeah. And that's no, no, probably I'm why just kind of curious. That, that's yeah. probably why you should probably, well, not necessarily calculate to the least common denominator. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, if you have – Something and and I don't know who it was who said you know civilians don't necessarily need quote duty ammo I I, I would 
probably not agree with that because oh no yeah you, I, you I, that's you no. could have the options on the table of, of what and you that's go- not what I was saying at all I'm just saying no 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 there was do, somebody do, in the chat up to oh I see okay okay I was like oh god no I think we should have full access to everything of course yeah. well, one you of know. the things that I wanted to bring up was you know it might not be a real life situation that you're in a full on battle in the middle of the street <clears throat> excuse me but what is a real life situation is winter. You know, people dress light in the summer and a bullet will go through a T-shirt very simply. A bullet's not going to travel the same way through a big heavy winter jacket, a sweater, a sweatshirt, you know, uh, different layers of clothing. So that's a real life situation. You need to think about, you know, what state do you live in? In Maryland, when it's seven degrees out, people aren't wearing tank tops. No, no, no. You're wearing multiple sweater, sweatshirts, heavy winter coats. You know, you, yeah, definitely. I'm the same situation and, in Nebraska. And what about yeah. the people in Alaska that have to carry their defense ammo is not just for people, but for bears, bears. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're carrying hard cast, uh, solid bullets at that point. Right. So if, if I'm, if I'm hiking and I'm open carrying, I'm going to have different ammunition than if I'm concealed carrying downtown. Mm hmm. Yep, yep. I just in wintertime switch up to the 629. You know what? That's, that's another option too. <laughs> oh man. So anyway, that yeah, I just wanted to kind of run that through you guys, just kind of run that with you guys and see what you think. So all right, guys. So we're coming up on two hours. I think we're gonna probably go ahead and call it. This has been a great show. Uh first of all, I want to thank the panel for being here, and we'll go do a little a little, uh, little attendance here to see who joined us again today. We had Melvin Nutt and Steadley and AC97. Vandal was with us. DF2 Dot, Stealth Hunter 1000, uh, Local 223. C2, C4 Defense was with us. The Sarge was with us. Make sure you check out Sarge's channel. C4 Defense, very, very cool. Um, Black Cat Outdoors was with us. Patriot in the Dark, Jorge, uh, Sean Pottery. Midnight Range was with us today, too. Gizzard Gary was out there and here. Ozzy Osbourne. Texas Blades joined in. We had a lot of guys that were here initially and then had to drop because they had stuff going on. But, again, you guys can always catch up later if you miss any of the show. Tacos and French fries always, of course. Uh, Patriot in the Dark. And then over on the Gun Channel side, we had a we had a good little crowd going on. We had Patrick over there. We had Paper Plane Crash. Jim was over there. Uh, Tony joined in for a little while. Dead Horse was with us for a little while, too. Uh, they had a, a wonderful debate over fanny packs. Should you should you uh, daily carry in a fanny pack, yes or no? Or should you even fanny pack at all? Uh, that's another topic for another time. <laughs> Come on, Travis. The Rock carried the 454 in the movie faster. You could rock that again. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Um, unfortunately, the Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan is not mine. I'm just borrowing it from Stan over at SS Pond. It's out of his private collection. So who knows? Maybe if I like one, you know, it could be my bucket list gun. So I really did enjoy shooting it with the uh, 45. By the way, I finally got 454 Casul from Cabela's last night to run through the uh, Ruger Super Red Hawk Alaskan, uh, whatever load they make for it. I just grabbed it. They, they didn't have a lot of selection of 454 Casul, and they had no 45 uh, Colt plus P. I know Buffalo Boar makes it, and they didn't have it, so I might have to order some, but it's currently on back order. I can't even get it. So I will look around some of the local shops and stores and see if I can pick up some uh, some Buffalo Boar 45 Colt Plus P because I wasn't seeing a lot of variety in it, and I'm not reloading right now, so I can't load my own at this point. Uh, Cabela's lists one Plus P 45 Colt, and it's the Buffalo Boar. So somebody had said, hey, can you test that against the 454 Casul and let us know how it feels? And if I can find some, I will. Um, all I can tell you is the 454 Casul has got basically double the velocity of the uh, 45 Colt, and I can't even imagine the energy difference. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a fun test. I've only got 20 rounds. I've got one box of 20 because I don't know physically if I'll want to shoot more than 20. I've never fired 454 Casul before. I fired 44 mag through snub nose revolver, and it was one of the most uh, painful experiences of my life. I had a box of 50, which I struggled to get through. Um, but anyway, so that's going to be coming up on the channel. I got a lot of videos lined up. It's going to be a while. Guys, just to let you know, if you see a, a video on a gun and you're like, hey, can you do a review on this one or a cleaning video on that gun? It'll be coming, but I'm trying to rotate the videos through the channel. And I got a lot of videos in the cache that I made before school started back up so I could get videos out there and not have to go to the range. Well, not get to go to the range every other day. Um, I missed the range already, but anyway. Also in October, if you guys, you might want to look this up, go to 1kplusllc.com. And uh, that's the range I belong to, the Rob Jeffrey Firing Range. They're going to be doing a machine gun shoot in October. And I'm going to see if I can get out there and get some coverage on it. Uh, they tend to do it on a weekend when I'm out of town a lot, but I think I'll be around this year. And you can go out there, and, and they just got like a flat rental fee 
for whatever gun you're going to be renting and you buy the ammo out there at the range and they're charging normal basically walmart prices for the ammo and you get to shoot full auto if you've never done it before so they're going to be doing that they're going to have a, a cookout going on like a barbecue going on opportunity to check out some really cool historical guns so that's uh 1k plus llc.com if you're interested in their machine gun shoot it's pretty cool i think it's called like the brass river shootout or something like that it's pretty sweet so anyway let's go ahead and let uh, the panel uh say goodbye and do any plugs and anything they want to mention that's fine tony we'll start with you anything you'd like to say before we go ahead and call it uh not particularly I all right got nothing going on just the uh, squirrel hunting good how long day, is your everybody. season yeah our season all goes right. until february 15th oh man you got plenty of time now you get to go out a lot don't you that's awesome man heck yeah dude heck yeah uh let's see somebody says try sportsman's warehouse for buffalo boar i might have to i might have to machine gun cookout midnight range tm yes that's what it is they have a barbecue you get you get your meal included when you uh buy your your entrance fee to get into the machine gun shoot you get machine guns full auto uh pulled pork sandwiches brisket all the goodies so all right so anyway tony thank you so much uh squib what about you anything you want to say before we call it uh, yeah, if you can, tune into uh, Hawaii Volcano Squad's channel. Oh, We've yeah. got a weekly show we do on Monday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern. I know that's kind of late for some people. Uh, you can watch it after the fact. It's on YouTube. So That's only 10 uh, o'clock for it's called, me in the central time zone. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, and that. for Hawaii, it's like, I want to say it's like 5 p.m. or something. Yeah, so yeah. He's like, what? It's not late. What? <laughs> but, <laughs> he makes uh, a lot of good prep yeah. videos, enjoy watching this channel yep prepping uh bitcoin it's not real and uh just gun stuff and, and some politics and talking about the apocalypse and just more or less just uh just having having some fun and sure. sometimes uh we're, we're short on topics but okay. um we just we just try to have fun on monday nights Right on, man. Right on. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us every week like you do, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Jim, anything you want to say before we go, man? Anything you want to say before we uh, call it? Uh, thanks for the invite. Yeah. Um, that's I, I got nothing. All right, man. All right. Get that floor done, man. Get that floor done and then you can I got it. Got to get it hammered out, man. Yep. If I was down there, I'd help you. I'd love to learn how to do something like that. I'm not. I, I love working on houses and homes, and I've learned a lot in the last five or ten years. But that would just be awesome to learn how to actually do flooring and stuff because I, I have very little experience with it. I can do windows, plumbing, some electrical, but just not a lot of, of flooring at all. I have no experience with it. So yeah. there we go, man. My challenge is <laughs> my cha we're off to we're off to the. I got to start emptying bedrooms and being all disruptive to people's uh, lives to get oh, to the man. next part. <laughs> I can see why you've been waiting on that. So maybe yep. send them off for the weekend someplace nice, like a cruise, and then just hit, hammer, get the carpet out of there, and just rip through it. You know? All right. Get a case of Red Bull, and you're all set. So <laughs> cool. Coffee and 80s rock. That's just that's what, it. That's, what, that's all you need right there. Work. Exactly. Just put some metallic in or drop some Megadeth, and you're ready to go. Yeah. Yep. And just start bumping the music and play that floor out. So sweet, man. Uh, Gizzard Gary, thanks for joining us, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Anything you want to say about the channel or plug the channel before we call it? Uh, just like to have everybody check out my website at gizzardgary.com. I did a, a video on the studio mic I used yesterday, so I might check that out if you haven't had a chance to do so. Uh, okay. Join gun channels, obviously. If you're not a member, check it out. Oh, yeah. Join up. It's free, and you'll love it. Uh, another place, a great place to check out is guntube.org. It's something that Night Strike is trying to put together for mm -hmm. a great place to visit a video repository and basically a YouTube replacement down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and as always, like, share, and subscribe to Travis P11. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for the it. invite. Hey, no, dude, it's awesome having you here. And at some point, we need to, we need to get together and do some shooting, man. I'm telling you, it'd be yes, awesome. Yes, we do. You're not that far from me, so. Um, but yeah, dude, guys, check out Gizzard Gary's channel. He's very active, and do again check out GunTube.org and GunChannels.com. It's it's what brought me in to getting into making gun videos and, and the podcast and all that fun stuff. And I've made so many friends from it. You know, just just awesome people everywhere. It's just a good place to go and and get to network with other people and, and have a good time. So, all right, man, sweet. Uh, David, David, it's your first time on the on the chat. How'd that go for you, man? What do you think? You you gonna come with us in the future? You gonna be able to? Wake up. Uh, well, it's already 11 o'clock where you are. you got an hour advantage over me. Yeah, Eastern Standard Time is the only one that matters anyway. So, 
you know, they call us central because everything rotates around us, like the solar system and the flat earth and the sun. No, I'm messing with you. Just relax. That's right. You're like triggered. <laughs> no, but dude, it's awesome having you on the chat again. You know, anytime you want to join in, I'll, I'll put you on the, the list to, to invite you like everybody else that I do. And it was cool having us here. Guys, check out um, David Bowling's channel. What do you want to see about the channel? What do you got coming up? What is the name of your channel? Where can we go to watch your content? I uh, just got signed up on Gun Channel, so there's nothing over there except uh, hello. Uh, but you okay. can go on YouTube. Uh, it's David Bowling, spelled just like the game, B-O-W-L-I-N-G. And this is my icon, just the Ruger icon. And I make pretty much rudimentary videos about my experience with guns. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you go by and check it out, you can tell me what you think. You know, I just wanted to say thanks for the invite. You know, I appreciate it. And uh, the panel, I'm telling them to sub your channel right now. So there you go. The link is up. So you should have exponential uh, subscribers joining. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. I couldn't find a better group of people. I mean, if, if you yeah. know a better group of people than this, I don't like the term community, but I'll say it, this community, uh, then you'll have to show them to me because I don't think that they're out there. You know, it's just people are, they're hardworking individuals. They're down to earth. They have a lot of farm experience. There's a lot that we have in common. There's a lot of like, common ideas that we have. And, you know, we're all different. We all have different backgrounds, but there's a lot that, a lot of common ground, I think, that we have, you know, that, that we can all see. And I think that has a, it really makes for good communication. It does make for a good community feel. I mean, it's like there's, you know, we support for each other. We look out for each other. We're here to give each other advice and help each other out and joke around with each other and so on and put on blue dresses and things like that. So, you know. Um, but yeah, guys, do get over to David, uh, David Bowling's channel. I apologize. I used to call you David Bowling. I don't know why <laughs> when I first started reading your name on the chat, David Bowling's like, dude, bowling like the game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I do apologize if I, if I butcher anybody's names out there, sometimes it's just the first time I saw it. So there we go. All right. Good stuff. Good plug, man. So, so anyway, with, with my channel guys, again, I'm on gunchannels.com, uh, guntube.org, gunstreamer, huge tube, whatever those two are going to combine to form at some point. Uh, obviously gunchannels.com. Do check that out if you get a chance. I'm um, also over on MeWe. If you guys decide to join MeWe, it's M-E-W-E. Go over there, sign up. They got an app for iOS and Android. And I believe it's just Travis or Travis Patushka or Travis P11. I got a B channel that you guys can check out also, but it's mostly like technology, electronics, coffee. I don't really put any firearms content on there. I keep that around in case the Travis P11 channel would ever get kind of shot down or struck against or whatever so i've got a backup with all the videos on standby i could start reloading if i had to my videos um otherwise i'll keep putting a video out you might see a little more frequency of videos i know it might get kind of annoying because i'm always every other day i'm hitting you guys up with a new video uh, i'm doing a lot of gear tests and stuff and i like to try to get those out as soon as i can because i do them when that unboxing happens or as soon as they go out to the range i want to post the video quick so monday through thursday you're definitely gonna see videos monday and wednesday and I went ahead and just posted one yesterday for the heck of it, Friday, and then we have today's. So again, make sure you mash the bell so that you don't miss the videos when they post. If you have the bell on the subscribe link for this channel, um, it will alert you when I go live on podcasts and stuff like that. I try not to do a lot of unannounced podcasts, but sometimes I do just for fun. Uh, so anyway, that's just something about the channel. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I got a lot of videos, a lot of content for you. Should be with you next week for Caliber Corner, episode number 56. Again, these are all viewer fuel topics. Um, I'm coming up on 10,000 subscribers and we've got a very cool giveaway coming up for that. That was sponsored by SS Pond and I'll show that off. We'll talk about it next week. The closer we get to 10K, the, 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 we'll make an announcement about what you have to do for the video. Typically, it's leave a comment in the video and you're going to be automatically entered uh, when I do the drawing online. I don't make you a sub. I don't make you forward or subscribe or pass it off to five friends or anything like that. It's just leave a comment about whatever the topic is in the video. A lot of times it's suggestions for topics for this show. And then um, it gives me more more ideas for the channel, uh, what else to put out on the, on the show. So anyways, I think that's it, guys. This has been Caliber Corner, episode number 55, where we talked about pocket carry pistols and long-term ammo storage and our choices in uh, self-defense and defensive ammo. Guys, you all are great. Thank you for joining me on the panel. Viewers out there on gun channels and YouTube, thank you for watching. You guys are great. Uh, just make sure you didn't miss anything here at all. That 454 Casual, I'll try to get that out in the next week or two as soon as I can. I'm limited to basically one or two days. I can get out to the range now between doing podcasts on the other channels. But anyway, enough of my babbling. This has been Caliber Corner number 55. Thanks for watching today, guys. Do uh, subscribe to all these people that are down here on the panel, and I think you'll be happy with the content they put out. So, okay, guys, have fun. Be safe, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.